Our keys are sponsored by Under Armour. The only way is through. Spencer? Timmy, I don't think you ever thought you'd be talking about Mike Gundy in, the, in, Gundy in this context. Stealing possessions? Are you kidding me? But that's what he's doing it with his running back, Jalen Warren. So, But they will take some shots down the field. They'll have an opportunity to do that. And in the backside, you got to get a Warren out for Warren. To find a way to do that in the West, and that is to arrest this guy if you can. If you can find a way to limit him, that's going to put Oklahoma State in a bind from a defensive standpoint. Tanner Brown takes it right through the end zone. Uh, there was some flying soft tacos. I think there may have been some down there. Donovan yes, Smith will make his way out on the field for the first time tonight. As you mentioned, he's the goods. 25 of 32 in that football game a week ago. Also rushed it for 50 yards. He was the Big 12 newcomer of the week, taking over for an injured Henry Columbia. And uh, did so at Oklahoma, has not surrendered the job since. And we will get a steady diet of a ground game from this team as well. Much like Oklahoma State, they're sort of mirror images of one another. So Roderick Thompson, Xavier White, Taj Brooks, all running backs. You look at the young man from Snyder, a Snyder Tiger Texan, who has this program at least through the end of this year as its interim coach, Sonny Cumbie, former all-time great quarterback here. Of course, they've had many. Smith right away looking for his wide receiver Azukama. Eric Azukama. He wants the ball early and often. And that was Jarek Bernard Converse, number 24, that was down there with it. Azukama ran into him. And again, that was just an offensive ability. But you see from the onset, Tim, the arm behind this quarterback. He's got great size, as I said, at 6'5, 229. Taking a shot downfield. Sonny showing him he's got a big arm. Pistol formation, and Sir Roderick Thompson has stopped at the point of attack. Nothing doing, and it's uh, Evers with the stop, and let's get Tillman's takes. Well, Timmy, it's really about the tech offense. They've got to be able to exploit Smith's skill set, right? And we talked about what he can do. He can run the football. We know that. He's elusive, and he's extremely accurate. To me, that is what you've got to do if you're Texas Tech's offense. If you do that well, you'll have a chance. Then the defensive side of the ball, Oklahoma State has got to execute the motivation. What I'm talking about there, it's Jim Knowles' approach. He talks about teaching his guys, motivating, and then demanding the outcome that he's coached. And I, I love his philosophy. We'll get to unpack it along the way. Third down and nine for Smith. Three wides to the top of your screen. Pressure up the gut. They're not, communicating. Up, yeah. they're not communicating on these outcuts. I mean, they're yep. trying to run vertical routes on the perimeter. And uh, again, early communication problems. You know he's a young quarterback, but he's been around the program enough to know. That's a, a quarter field read, Tim. And what we're talking about is when you have a guy that's going to eyeball where he wants to go, yep. you're not asking him to read every aspect of the field. But it's a simple quarter field read. The look from Azukama told me that that was his mistake. Mm -hmm. Rather than Donovan Smith. McNamara will punt it away after three and out. Brennan Presley is back deep, sure-handed back there. As the deep safety. Their catch is called for by Presley at the 23-yard line. That's a 49-yard boot. So now the Cowboys with Spencer Sanders, who's just been like old man River, keeps on rolling along, staying efficient after what had really been an up-and-down career. The redshirt junior from Denton, Texas, Coming off a wonderful performance a week ago, as you know, against TCU, 17 of 25 for 235. And of course, had a record number of yards on the ground, which he contributed to as well. And Mike's got a great quarterback here. He's kind of, as you said, Tim, a slow burn has been really the arc of his progress. But he's as integral to what they do offensively as Jalen Warren is. And we'll show you why as the game goes along. Play fake to Warren. It's quick out. And they go... And a big hit was made there by Schooler after just a two-yard gain. Logan Carter was the receiver. Just a two-yard gain. Well, Tim, has a great defensive stop. But again, a nondescript play. Otherwise, I'll tell you why this quarterback is so special, because he will begin to stretch the field. He's going to take you both sides, to the right and now to the left side of the field. That's what he brings. Blaine Green. He and his brother Bryson, very active a week ago. And that stop was made by Adrian Taylor Demerson. Four yard pickup. And a little pace and tempo, Tim. Going to try to do that so they can discern exactly what this Texas Tech defense is trying to do. 
from a surface or a front standpoint. Smith is going to try to get him into the right play. Plenty of time here. Logan Carter remains in the game. He's in that slot left. Warren, look out. Oh, look nice out. Job. Oh, that's a shoestring tackle that if it's not made, it goes maybe for a touchdown. Taylor Dimerson there was the one, the safety, got him by that shoestring, Tim. Number 25, we talked about him early on. Watch this. Warren's seen, feeling, got that ball secured and tight, and then at the last second, clicking those heels to get him down. Great defensive stop in open field. But it's the anatomy of this offensive scheme, to the right, to the middle, or rather to the left and to the middle. After the gain of nine, Sanders will air it out. That's the shot you were talking about. Looking for Tay Martin incomplete. And the reason they took that shot was because it was a cover three look. And that meant that the whole shots are going to be on the hash marks in between the corners at either side. So defending number seven. You get him going, Timmy, they have got to face that with numbers. So when Warren gets going, and you can stop him with, say, five in that box, that's cool. But if you have to deploy more down there, all of a sudden, those hole shots are going to start to open up. You just don't have enough bodies to cover. On second down, Sanders flushed. There's three-man rush. Yep. And he dumps it out. Live to play another day. Great coverage that time by Texas Tech. Yeah, you drop an eight then, just rushing three. If you can get pressure on without doing that, sacrificing it, off coverage, man under concept, love that. Everybody's covered up even though it was a three look on the back end, Tim. When I say three, I'm just saying that there was only three personnel back deep. That means you've got more bodies underneath the coverage. Excellent. Jaden Bray has checked into the game, number 85. Split wide to the bottom of your screen. Third down and ten. Sanders, four man rush. Beautifully thrown nice. to Tay Martin for the first down. Move the sticks into Texas Tech territory at the 48. Rashad Williams shoves him out. Williams, a nice job of being there. But again, with press coverage on the outside, a switch route underneath your back occupying the middle slot defender. Wonderful job of pitching and catching on that play by Spencer. Was tipped at the line of scrimmage by Schooler. Well, what a what a year he's had, Colin Schooler. And I know he's a part of your takes for tonight's game. <laughs> Boy, he's something special, this defender. Transfer from Arizona. Well, all of these defenders are excellent, Tim. They're outstanding. They do a they do a fantastic job of running and chasing. Out of the shotgun with Warren back there. Again, the out pattern to Tay Martin, and right down the sideline he goes. Yards after initial contact, gets him inside the 10, down to the 8, and he's hauled down by Eric Monroe, the transfer from LSU. Well, they're really working on Rashad Williams, Tim, big time, number 12. Again, he's got great size and range, 6'3". Again, they're coming his way. Three different occasions they've been able to burn him on that side. Got players in this hip pocket already getting plus yardage, already knocking on the doorstep is this Oklahoma State offense. Well, it's pretty clear that they have recognized that Texas Tech is going to take away the run. They are chucking that baby mm -hmm. in this opening series. Inside zone. Warren. Stopped at the seven. That's Merriweather, Christian Merriweather. These linebackers, listen, we talk so often about Oklahoma State, but in Hutchings, in Merriweather, Schooler, uh, Reggie Pearson is now back, getting to play some. Texas Tech is good at the second level. I'll tell you, Taylor Dimerson will stick his nose in there. They've been working on him a little bit. He's salty. Slant. Nice. Knocked away. Good defensive work. Ball was tipped and appeared. I see some more flying soft tacos. I do. <laughs> Thought for a moment it was a flag. It wasn't. Pearson got a hold of this one right there. Pearson, Pearson got that hand up. Yeah. Man, that's what you do. If you can't get to the quarterback, there, you can still affect it. How do you do that with timing? Batting the ball down or away or deflecting. We saw that happen in Michigan State today. It's Ohio State. You've got to be able to affect the quarterback. Can't get home. You can always jump. Third and goal. Martin on the fade is a favorite decision usually at this spot for Sanders. They specialize in it. He's at the bottom of your screen. Instead, it's Warren, and he's dumped. 
At the six, nothing doing. Texas Tech led by Jalen Hutchings. 28 tackles, 12 solos, a bunch of tackles for losses and sacks. He is a huge portion of that defensive front. Rico Jeffers was in there as well, number six, and you're going to see him. 6'2", 230 pounds, senior. Uh, he's a wonderful athlete, man. The way he reads and diagnoses, been around this program a long time. Transfer, comes over and makes an indelible mark on what they're doing on the backside of the stop unit. Tanner Brown from 24 yards. And he puts it through. But that's a win for the Texas Tech defense. They get the job done in the red zone. On that drive, they passed it eight times for 58 yards and only rushed it three. I think you get the M.O. for this evening. Fox College Football is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Ram Trucks, J.D. Power's number one brand in new vehicle quality. Cowboys get on the board after some dynamic passes from uh, Spencer Sanders, particularly to Tay Martin. But they were stopped inside the red zone by Texas Tech. That is... Kalen Geiger, who is, you love to call him as an eraser, as a wide receiver, mm -hmm. one of the big gets for Texas Tech a season ago as a transfer and is also used on special teams. Well, with the following win, they'll let it go through yet again. And Texas Tech will take over at that point. A quick three and out in their opening series and some miscommunication between Smith and his one of his favorite targets, Azukama. Tim, you mentioned the wind. Not much of a factor at night. The wind usually dies down in West Texas about this time. It does. But it gets crazy. I know you experienced that driving. <laughs> <Yeah. Over. laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, you better hang on that steering wheel. I know there, all man. about post-Texas yes, and Norm Cash <laughs> Field and Snyder. Snyder. Yeah, the home of <laughs> the interim head coach, Sonny Cumbie. You know where the gas stations are, yeah, too. Yeah, I basically. sure do. <laughs> they got a little jet sweep action to Ezekama. Or check that. It may have been Kalen Geiger, I beg your pardon. Geiger rather than Azucama. They used him, you might recall, very early in the Kansas State game in a similar play that went for big yardage. Well, you saw some of the foot speed of Malcolm Rodriguez there, and, and, and we had him in the open just talking about how long that tandem with Devin Harper, how potent they are. Donovan Smith in trouble, and down he goes. That's That, that defense is so good, and that's Evers, 98. Getting the job done. The redshirt senior from Bixby, Oklahoma, had help from Malcolm Rodriguez. Great who had penetration. Great program at Bixby, but again, number 20 was the one off the edge, Tim. And they'll move him around. He, they've got him listed as an inside backer, but because of his athleticism, they will move him on the outside. He'll even cover a slot receiver. The guy is that athletic. you got to have your eyeballs pinned on him. This defense is the best at getting off the field on third down. Nice pressure. Nothing but negative plays. 15 yards in three plays going the wrong way as Brock Martin makes this stop. They have only allowed on third down 24% efficiency. That's number one in the country. Brock, you know, is a great performer physically, but he's also an academic, an all-academic performer, Tim. You love to see those players up front that don't get a lot of attention, along with his battery mate on the other side, 89, Tyler Lacey. Brock, of course, wears number nine. Impact players, smart guys as well. McNamara will boot it away. Six plays, minus 13 yards on the two drives for the Red Raiders thus far. High, booming punt, a beauty. And Presley on top of it. That was a magnificent punt, and they needed it there. Otherwise, Oklahoma State would have had outstanding field position. Above and Beyond, sponsored by Jersey Mike. Be a sub above. Spencer, these are the numbers that no doubt Keith Patterson, the defensive coordinator, was looking at in preparation for this game. 447, seven plus per tote, and eight touchdowns. Well, that makes you figure out who, who do we defend? Is it the yeah. run game becomes primary? Or, yeah. But you know that Mike Gundy, because of his pedigree, his background, a former quarterback, of course, a star from the days of Midwest City High School, the Bombers, all the way through his playing days at Oklahoma State. This guy, at his core, is a vertical guy under Mike Leach and with Mike Leach working. They just understand it. They're from that air raid concept, and he wants to get the ball vertically, but he can't. But he's done a wonderful job of curtailing his tendency to want to do that and rely on this run game instead. 
Out of the pistol. Yes. Great penetration by Texas Tech defensively. That's Bradford, 97. And I mean, again, this looks like Oklahoma State defense light, does it not? Yep, North Shore's finest right here, man. You know, here's a guy that comes to this program. You know, he was a transfer, and he doesn't necessarily have the reputation that was stellar when he came in, but he gets along exceptionally well with the group that's here, and he shows you that little quick twitch speed and movement at that nose tackle position. Wonderful job of stressing that front of Oklahoma State. Second down and 15. Nice job of containing. Cutting it back up. Warren gets back what he lost on the first down carry. That's Philip Bleedy, 96. And Tyreek Wilson was on that play, Tim. And even though he won't get credit as we look at Williams down on the ground, number 64, Oklahoma State, uh, it was Tyree Wilson, the one who contained and folded yep. that play back in, number 19. Now they've got some injuries up front. Yep. Williams being forced to play in place of Josh Sills at that left guard spot. And, of course, Godlewski, the starting center, was also banged up, which meant uh, Mahalski was going to play some center tonight, 66. Two major stops. Now, this with Oklahoma State is terrible news because they're already a little thin in that offensive front because of those aforementioned injuries to Godlewski and Sills at left guard and you can see Tim he carries most of his weight in his legs in his hip area and you know yeah. that's that's always tough linemen when you got them braced up all of them are gonna wear braces in in the first place but it, it they really get antsy when you start getting around their legs well, it looks like he's walking it off okay we can certainly hope that he is not done for the evening as we mentioned this is a Cowboys team that for the most part have been, has been relatively injury free since the beginning of the year at the very start of the season they were without a bunch of skilled players which probably has a lot to do with why they're still ranked number nine mm -hmm. with the record they have. They had some very close games with inferior opposition early on. Sanders is flushed from the pocket on third and long. And that's an outstanding defensive play. Tay Martin again, the intended receiver. Texas Tech getting it done at the third level back in that secondary. Yeah, Keyshawn Merriweather, also the Mike linebacker, did a wonderful job, number one, of forcing the issue at the end because he came from that middle or Mike linebacker position and he ended up always on the perimeter, Timmy. And so that shows you the athleticism and, and the responsibility that they're going to give him. Keith Patterson's stop unit did a yeah. wonderful job. Tay had a little alligator arm issue there, too, <laughs> running through the seam there. <laughs> Hutton will punt it away. Adrian Fry with the reception, and he tries to do something with it, but can't. Three-yard boot and a two-yard return. Hard to turn that pump jack a short arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was wearing it after the last practice. We'll be back. Let's get to know Sonny Cumbie, your interim head coach at Texas Tech. Marvelous job. As a player, in fact, a Holiday Bowl winner over Aaron Rodgers of Cal. Oh, yeah. And an MVP in that Holiday Bowl when he threw for a record at the time, 520 yards. Did the job, as you know, with TCU, that white hot offense that he teamed with Doug Meacham to be a part of. You know, he led the nation in passing that year. He it's sure did. Total offense as well. Just a great spirited guy. Uh, love to talk about what he means to this program. And you, you know, significantly, it means a lot. It sure does. Donovan Smith trying to do it on his own, out of his own read. But again, Oklahoma State does such a great job of staying at home. That's Jason Taylor, the second. You talked about him at the top of our broadcast, and this is one of the reasons why. Young man always is in the right place to make a play. He's got great size, about six foot, 215, and, and he's got good range, too. And that's what you want out of a safety, a guy that you can move around. If you have to put him single high, you can trust him to cover those quarters of the field a long way, a lot of water there. He's athletic enough to do it. Another loss on a first down play. Smith in trouble again with tuck it and run. He gets it out to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. The scamper was good, but Devin Harper hauled him down. The redshirt senior out of Knoxville, a Butkus Award semifinalist. And you just don't see too many 6'5 guys do this right here. I mean, you, you, you think it's because he's that big, he would be willing to do it, but it takes a lot more than that. you got to be able to see it and then make those moves as well, protect yourself. All the things that goes into keeping a quarterback upright and healthy, this guy's got a running back's mentality, but he's got accuracy. All of that stuff came through in a relatively short sample size, Tim. I think that's what makes him dangerous. Third down and three. Not able to get the pass in game uncorked as yet. 
So Roderick Thompson is the lone setback with Smith. Four verticals here, definitely a pass. In trouble again. Dodges it. Now it. looks long as Zukama tries to make a move on it, and they'll get a flag. Well, Jared Bernard Converse, in defense of him, he had his back turned. The ball was un underthrown. That's really a wise That's choice. Here's defense, the call. Number 24, 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Uh, Vangel Christian fine is out of your neck of the woods Tim here's the pressure on the quarterback does a nice job of stepping up and avoiding that's some of the elusiveness that we also referred and talked about at the beginning of the show for a guy that is that big Tim you just don't expect for him to be that fluid wonderful job of avoiding the initial pressure yep and uh, you're right Bernard Converse is one of the best cover corners they have out of Shreveport Louisiana Evangel Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. They have put out so many outstanding athletes through the years. We see the numbers on Azukama. Career versus Oklahoma State. Xavier White now has checked in in the backfield to replace Thompson. And they'll pitch oh. it his way. The ball is oh. loose, but he picks it up. Oh, he got a Sunday hop. And now look. I think he may have stepped out just as he was getting close to the the uh, the marker. It's going to be maybe a yard, maybe two shy of the first down. It'll be very close. This is some bounce. <laughs> Watch this. It's like it had eyes, right? It yeah. came right back to him, man. Uh, that's a gratuitous, fortuitous bounce right back into his hands, but that didn't happen very often. Actually, he stepped out a little further up the line than uh, I had originally thought. It'll be second and six, so give him four yards on the carry. The pressure coming late. White, not much. And again, that forward wall so good. Oliver comes up to give some help. Colin Oliver, number 30. Yeah, and 20 and 16 are always going to be there too, man. Malcolm Rodriguez and Devin Harper. I see 99 is also taking up a lot of space in there as well. I've never seen Mike Dunny so well. He's always calm, but I mean, he can have that calmness when you've got a stop unit like he has. Usually oh, yeah. it's come as a result of his offensive prowess, but as we look at this five wide look, this looks something more like what Oklahoma State would run. Four yards to gain. Tiger. And he's got the first down. You, you love this young man. I love him a lot. And, you know, Seth Collins did a wonderful job of trying to get in there to stop and pull him down number zero. But again, this affects the eye discipline of the stop unit again. As athletic as we've talked about that they are, Devin Harper could not get there to him. You see there's Humphrey, then, then Evan comes, Devin uh, Harper comes in on the backside of number 16. That affects the eye discipline. When you have that jet motion and that cross motion, guys start to look and they get undisciplined in their eyes, and you can catch them out of position. Taj Brooks checks in, number 28 in the backfield. And he'll tote it ahead for two, maybe three. We'll call it second down and seven coming up. And, Tim, you look at what Texas Tech is doing. They really are imitating a lot of what Oklahoma State is doing. They're stressing the field from left to right to middle, making Oklahoma State defend every area of the field. And that's how you keep pressure on the defense. And at the same time, you're shortening the game as well. Brooks remains the setback on second and eight. Old school trips formation here with a little gun. Pistol. Uh -oh. Uh oh ball hit the up back that was teeter the tight end 43 in motion and I think he got on top of it it hit him right in the uh, hip as he was making his move wisely got on top of it as quickly as he could it's a short motion and again the center that's a center's problem but again as the back is moving teeter's got to be mindful of that you kind of sneak a peek and look at that ball so as to avoid it if you possibly can. You know, you just can't be meandering around back there. They've dodged a couple of bullets <laughs> with the ball on the ground against this usually opportunistic Cowboy defense. Third down and eight. Tight bunch formation. Let's see if they can sort this out on defensive side for Oklahoma State. As we come on. Nice inside. Well, they faked it to him, and they go inside, and Donovan Smith just hangs on to it. They had uh, part of that defense moving with number 13. He was giving that uh, jet sweep action. And it'll be fourth down, still plenty to go. Oklahoma State was not fooled. Jernigan and company were right there trying to stop him and discourage him from coming inside, Tim. But I think 
the willfulness that Mike Dunning's looking at is a quarterback that's willing to stick his nose in there. And so defensively, Jim Knowles has got to figure out a way to contend with him because he's going to be bigger than most of those secondary guys that they're asking to defend him. Well, this is typical air raid. Fourth and five at this spot on the field. Absolutely, they're this going is, for This it. is five verticals here. They're going to probably clear it out for him to run it. Smith wow. lets it fly deep, and he's got room. It's as he come on. Incomplete. Pass hung up a little bit on Smith. Tanner McAllister, number two, was back there defensively to break it up. Smith is now just one out of four in the air for 34 yards. Just off the helmet of McAllister. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. 3 0 our score. Spencer, let's go back to that last play on fourth down. Well, here's the, the trips formation to the field. That's the wide side. It's just basically a, a two concept where they've got guys running vertical up the field. It's a one-on-one -on -one ball. You're trying to win those battles. McAllister there in great position to defend it. It just comes up short, not able to haul it in. They made a lot of plays like that last week and that victory that they were able to get against Iowa State. It was a hard-fought W. And uh, in talking with Sonny Cumbie, as you see Warren getting ahead for an outstanding gain on first down, Tony Brad for the stop. He made no ifs or buts about it. He said that was the most important and euphoric victory they'd had since the Crabtree catch against Texas now, way that. back in the day. Mm -hmm. Warren... A negligible game there. Their defense, Spencer, they being Texas Tech, early on, very tough up the gut. They're getting the job done, these guys, Rico Jeffers and company. This is a heavy loaded box right here. Play fake, quick slant, and it's caught for the first down to Tay Martin up near midfield. Rashad Williams, number 12, twirled him down. Gain of six. Rashad Williams knows that he's in man coverage in that situation because that box was loaded up expecting the run. They caught it. Williams was right there in his hip pocket, man. That's confident defensive play out on the perimeter. First down from the 49 of Oklahoma State. Warren again. Burrows ahead to the 49, a gain of two. So second and eight, Tyree Wilson. Number 19, the Texas A&M transfer, makes the stop. Tyree showing you some athleticism, man, some flash. You get out that corner, man. He's so quick. He can't quick off that edge. Well, Spencer, I've uh, had my first mistake of the night. Okay. Pointed out to me. Yeah. Hello. They they throw tortillas, not soft tacos. Oh, very good. Yeah, th I think soft tacos would be a little messy, don't you? Yes, yes. Yeah. Particularly so, missed. Tortillas. Yes, West Texas heat. <laughs> it's a good one early. Cowboys trying to win their way into the Big 12 title with a win. Fox College Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. 3 0 our score as we open the second quarter with Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us alongside our able crew, content coordinator Scott Alexander, our spotter Brett Bender. Our liaison, Sean Wiggins, Wiggy, all in the booth tonight. And a quick out to open the second quarter into the hands of John Paul Richardson, who played a key role in the blowout win over TCU last week. That's uh, Taylor Damerson again, number 25, making the stop after an eight-yard game. I like this little freshman right here, particularly when they go four verticals like they were in that position, and then get the ball in his hands quickly because he's got phone booth type of moves, Tim. He's really quick and athletic. And I think they want to get the ball in his hands. He can make plays. So a third and manageable here. And look at this setup. Warren in the pistol now as they make the pre-snap adjustment. And he'll tote it. Texas Tech was ready for it. And he's short of it. He's about a yard shy. And it's Jalen Hutchings again with the stop. Last Saturday, Mark Hutchings... Team best 30th consecutive start. I mean, he has been a real go-to guy in that defensive front for Keith Patterson. There's so many unsung heroes. Rico Jeffers was another one on that last play who knifed in there to force the runner inside. And there's just so many unsung guys on this team. That's why they call it a no-name defense, man. But there's a lot of guys here 
who are making plays. So fourth and one, they go under center here. Looks like they may be huh. trying well, to draw it on sides. Off. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Just hold your water. Looks like they're just going to play some field position here and put it away. Time to find that pump jack when you get back to the <laughs> sideline, fellas. <laughs> uh, that's good. Hey, man, anything you can celebrate about and with, that's what you're... Play game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. So forth down. You know, positive motivation is a big deal, Tim. And oh, it is. Yes. When you go through coaching changes, you're looking for anything that will pull you forward as opposed to being chased by the fear of losing positions in favor with people you've curried that for the last two, three, four, five years, as the case may be for each player. Well, these guys have a lot to play for. They, they have a chance no to question. get to eight wins in the regular season if they can win this one tonight in their final game. <laughs> that ball is going to roll out of bounds through the end zone for a touchback. So they'll... Have some decent field position as opposed to the, being at the one yard line when we come back. Yeah. Sonny said he used to wake up mornings seeing that right out of his front window. How about that? Patrick Mahomes. Mm. What a marvelous career he had with Cliff Kingsbury, and he was hurt much of it. Played strong and kept them in every game, and of course. They can merchandise that moving forward with their <laughs> new head coach, Joey McGuire. We chatted with him about a half hour before the game. Really enjoyed it. We'll unpack that for you a little bit later on. Xavier White on the carry. And again, the penetration from Oklahoma State defensively is so strong. And then when you get help from your strong safety, Jason Taylor the second, then it's a big push and a loss of two. Yet again, a loss. That's the fifth tackle for loss for Oklahoma State. They are second in the FBS in that category. Get you behind the chains right away. Mm -hmm. Smith on the crossing pattern. It's caught. It's Geiger. There's a ball on the ground. I think he may have recovered it, or they may rule it incomplete. Let's see. They're going to call it incomplete. Tanner McAllister was there in his hip pocket. The ball was out, Tim, but it was incomplete, as you said. And I, I just think this team is really doing some cool things from a defensive standpoint they're playing with close proximity to the to the ball carry in this case on the pass into tip look at the, the proximity well, I, McAllister's right there in his hip well, pocket I, I thought he had it I really did but uh, that could have been a fumble they were fortunate that that was ruled incomplete third down and 12 Xavier White in the backfield and they're going to take another shot and again a miscommunication between wow. receiver and Donovan Smith Geiger was running that you know, was running a, a shallow cross, yeah. and he went across the field. I mean, listen, that's that's egregious. Those, that's the third error we've seen on perimeter shots. And I know they want to take some shots downfield, but the bottom line is you have to be able to communicate because if your receiver is not reading the coverage the same way you're reading it, that's that's one of the, the hallmarks of this offensive system. It's like the old run and shoot. Yeah. The receiver and the quarterback have got to be on the same page reading the same coverage. McNamara will boot it away again. Beautiful punt. Oh, my goodness. And Presley on his heels will watch that one continue to bound inside the 20 to the 19. That's 63 yards by McNamara. Sonny trying to get his QB and his receivers on the same page, but always encouraging. That's Sonny Cumbie. College football is sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. In the land of mascots, Pistol Pete and the uh, Mass Rider, two of the best. And there is fearless champion Spencer, honored during the timeout for 14 years of service. And uh, you got to figure he's in a good mood knowing that all this is in his rearview mirror. Well, first of all, that's a wonderful quarter horse gilding right there. That's a that, uh, beautiful, beautiful animal. That's some future in retirement for fearless champion. <laughs> Jalen Warren is in the backfield. Sanders lets it fly under duress. 
for Tay, and Tay Martin tries to make the catch, and he did. That's an unbelievable catch. And Spencer, much like a fade pattern in the end zone, he played that ball as though it were a long, and I do mean 37-yard fade. And Jason Taylor was back there, uh -huh. Timmy, trying uh -huh. try to defend it. But it just Martin just did a wonderful job of hauling that one in there. Wonderful, wonderful catch, individual effort. The Washington State transfer, who had an unbelievable night, you may recall, when they played Oregon in a game we had a couple of years ago. One on the field where they uh, catch. He basket caught it, but he, I think he had control of that. Too. I don't know why we have to look at it. I mean, it, it, and you could, there's no bobble. He brings it in. Then he gets the arm underneath it as he rolls out. Yep, I misspoke. Uh, Taylor Demerson was the one that was back there, Tim. He was that's that's a catch in his hip pocket. I mean, I guess in today's world we have to get it right. But you see the hand firmly underneath the ball, mm -hmm. and now we stop play for a time period here. Well, I think the fact that he turns his body over and again when he corrects and goes the opposite direction, that left arm goes underneath it. So I can see the the line judge is trying to look, and I think. Demerson got in front of him and obscured his view, so he wants to be sure of the call, but I thought it was a great catch. I get that. I don't want to be too hard on mm -hmm. him. I David think. Alvarez, our referee, taking a look. Replay official Tim England. But I think you, know, you have to, I guess, look at it because of where the ball was and if the line judge wasn't absolutely sure. But I think in today's world, Spencer, I'll just say it again. White hats should operate the game as though they are the, the law. Uh -huh. and until such time as the replay official says, okay, let me look. I think the only reason he looked again is because the safety, Taylor Demerson, was standing there, number 25, in front of him, and he did not see the completion when the ball was turning over. You can see him here. Now watch 25 yeah. come and get in his line of sight. After he crosses, he wanted to see if he can complete the catch. 25 gets in his line of sight, and he can't see yeah, whether or not good, the completion is there. That's a cogent point on your part. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Martin's longest After catch further review, of the season. Down the field stands the catch at the 46-yard line. Well, they got that route right. His previous was 36. This one measures 37 yards. Well, here's the route here. It's a, it's a nice inside tandem route, out cut. Everybody's going to the corner. A deep corner route reaches out and adjusts it. That last minute, that last little surge forward was what allowed him to even get in position to make that play. Subtle difference, but all the difference in the world in between a completion and an incomplete well, pass. Well, explosive plays are hard to come by tonight. Texas mm -hmm. Tech's defense is playing up to the level of the competition, and Oklahoma State's one of the top defenses in the country. Sanders looking towards the sideline. Dangerous pass, but Green, that's Blaine Green. And they're going to rule it out of bounds. They're going to say incomplete, I think. He was in a fight for the football, and I think never really had control of it. They'll rule it out of bounds and incomplete. That's Reggie Pearson, 22. Yeah, he was playing fighting with it. He's playing the spur position, and Reggie got back there in a good position to defend it. Boy, I don't know. I mean, it, it I looks think like that's a, a catch. I think they really need to look at that one more than they did the last one. And now they will. <laughs> yeah, Blaine Green knows it too. Under further review, they're rolling on to fill the incomplete pass. That's a wonderful catch, and he never put that heel down. He stayed on his front toe. The heel did not come down on the white. That's a catch. The other angle will illustrate it better. And he that's made, a catch. Yeah, and he maintained control and completed the catch too. Yep. And, one good turn deserves another, and Mike is saying, come on, I want to talk about it. That was a catch, Coach. Oh, it came down to the white? Yeah, okay. that's what I had, but... No, I know, I just was curious. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's all about, I know. Mike's all about democracy. He gets it, but I think that while the official was saying the heel was on the white, the heel was not. Yeah, the heel never came down. If this is converted, it'll be a 15-yard reception. We'll see. Dean Blandino back in Los Angeles will weigh in for us. Dean? Yeah, so there's a there's an officiating concept called toe heel, and if it's a normal step, if any part of the foot, normally the heel comes down out of bounds, that would be an incomplete pass. Here, the heel never touches the ground. You're going to see the left foot, the toes are going to be in bounds. Right. 
heel never comes down, maintains control. This, this is a catch, good stop by replay, and should be overturned. Yeah, I agree with you. This stop was really necessary. I didn't think the last one was, but this one certainly is, and that's just a remarkable play because Green was in a wrestle for the ball with Reggie Pearson, who's an outstanding defender, plays that spur spot, and they're really happy to have him back. He's been in and out of the lineup. Young man transferred from Wisconsin, part of that defense for a while out of Detroit, Michigan. What bodes well for us is they're throwing the ball up and they're going to allow these guys to make individual plays. I like that. And that's the beautiful thing about yeah, it. I like We're going to see a lot of go balls yeah. like that tonight. But this means a lot, as you pointed out, the top of the show for Texas Tech. I mean, you're trying to get the eight wins, man. That's significant. It matters. Keith Patterson told us, he said, look, and he knows you know, he's, he's going to be out of here at the end. And rather, is he concerned? Sure. But he knows as a veteran coach, this is not his first rodeo. He'll be uh, landing on his feet yet again very soon. But he's got eight After super seniors review, on this team. After further review, the receiver controlled the ball with his left foot inbounds. It'll be first down to the 28-yard line. That's a great work and unbelievable catches back to back. Tay Martin right there, and then Blaine Green right here. But uh, and this excellent. defense, though, Patterson's defense has been really good tonight, and they've had to be. And they really have. And I was just going to give Dino credit. He was the third great play in that little sequence there. He he called it and suggested it would be overturned, and it was. So the ball at the 28 after a 15-yard pickup. Trips to the field. Let's see if they confuse him with a little crossing route here, Tim. Tay Martin at the bottom of your screen. Looking that way. Fade time. And it is incomplete. No flag. Rashad Williams, number 12, giving chase. They've been working on Rashad Williams all night long. And again, anytime you get those one-on-one -on -one matchups, take a shot. We love to give those guys a chance to go climb the ladder and make a play. A little chicken fighting going on there at the end of the hands. That's all right. Let them play. Great to see these guys match up. Second down and 10. John Paul Richardson up at the top of your screen in the slot, number 17. Sanders rolls towards the boundary and will keep it. And he scampers inside the 20 down to the 19, maybe the 18. Very close, and it will be enough for the first down. Move the chains. Well, the redshirt junior showing that athleticism and foot speed there. We we get so used to him distributing the ball in other ways. Jalen Warren obviously primarily through the run this year, but he can still scoot himself. First down, Warren. Lost his footing. The yep. turf monster got him that time. Mm -hmm. That's a rarity right there. You can see Warren is built low to the ground. It's very rare that you'll see him lose his balance like that, especially in traffic. And try to go pace and tempo and get some time on the clock so that 12th man, and don't get offended, you Aggies out there. I'm just talking about literally there's a 12th man making this play call <laughs> out there on this play. Now, Dominic Richardson, number 20, has checked in for Warren after he stumbled out of the gates on that play. Sanders with plenty of time nice. towards the corner. Richardson incomplete. It was over his head. And it'll be third down and eight. Sanders now eight of 16 in the air for 123 yards. Yeah, Taylor Dimison was back there, the safety defending. Again, the inside slot receiver, number seven. Oh, nice shake move. He got him and put him in his hip pocket right now, Timmy. I told you this kid, when they had him on the perimeter, I like him in space, and that's one of the reasons why they want to get the ball to him because he does have those subtle Edelman-like moves in that slot position where he gets open. Spencer wanted to put a little more air underneath that mm -hmm. one. Third down and eight. Richardson in motion. He'll get it on a little swing. Double pass. He's looking for it. His receiver stumbled. It's down. incomplete. Wow. Jaden Bray oh. was wide open. That play's going to be a touchdown. But the turf monster got Bray in the end zone. Just as he was making his move, he lost his shoe. Texas Tech really fortunate here. Well, that happens in these parts. You throw a shoe like that, Timmy. You got to come back and make that play anyway, man. It doesn't uh -huh. matter. Uh -huh. I love Richardson, man. He is an unbelievable guy that they get the ball to in multiple ways. Uh -huh. Such a great asset. You fall down, can't make a play. Uh -huh. Tanner Brown will try from 33 yards. Out at 8 of 10 this season. And the Red Raiders dodge another bullet. 
I mean, the Cowboys had an absolute open trickeration for a touch. And suddenly, no white shoe for Billy. <laughs> Six to nothing. No chance in that answer. Yeah. All things considered, Spencer, with these many miscues for Texas Tech offensively, they're very fortunate to only be down six. Yeah, and most of them are self-induced. You know, again, the snap right directly into the motion man coming across, players on the receiver side of it, miscommunication, reading coverage. Sonny's trying to find a way to fix it. At the end of the day, he's got a young quarterback right now that's trying to find a sweet spot in his game. And to this point, it's eluded him. Yeah, well, that clock in your head is moving a lot more quickly against the Cowboys defense. Here's Kalen Geiger. Dumped hard at the 25-yard line. That's where Texas Tech will take over. They've run 18 plays, Texas Tech. Seven have been for negative yards. Eight have been no gain. Yeah. Okay, that's that's dominance by this Oklahoma State defense. And we should also mention that they've had a couple of sacks, the Cowboys. So their defense getting it done. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State has uh, made some acrobatic plays, but inside the red zone, you know, they've had a few calamities, including the stumble by Warren on first down and then the turf monster again on the trick play to close the last series. Taj Brooks is in the backfield. And here goes Donovan Smith. He's ahead to the 30. You see those long gates of his, how athletic he is at 6'5". That's Colby Harvell Peel, 31, an outstanding tackler in space getting the job done defensively. I love that kid out of AM Consolidated. You know, he just, he's able to work and size up with the guy that's bigger than he is, actually, and does a wonderful job in space against a big quarterback. Tim, going back to your point about the, the miscues, they have been self-induced. It's not like Oklahoma State has forced that. I mean, again, uh, Oklahoma State is in close proximity to the ball, but everything that I'm seeing t Texas Tech do is self-induced errors. Smith flushed. In trouble, has to get rid of it. And that was a safety blitz or corner blitz from Jarek Bernard Converse. And that young man forced his hand along with Rodriguez. Yeah, Rodriguez is in the hip pocket. And there's Jim Knowles right there. The guy with the black hat on in the middle. He is a guru. He, he is a guru. And I'm telling you, I love his philosophy about teaching these kids and then demanding ultimately that they execute. He says, look, we practice and we're going to make mistakes. We're going to correct it. But we don't practice to perform. We practice to be perfect. And then we expect those kids to do that. If they're not perfect, we don't play them. Oh, wow. They called intentional grounding on that play. No. We'll see. That, again, that, that is consistent with this kind of self-induced theme that I'm talking about. That ball was not batted. Well, he was certainly being held on to. And I thought the, the, the pass went awry. Yes. He was just trying to unload it. Did not get it back to the original line of scrimmage, hence the, the call. So a good call, albeit late. Taj Brooks remains in the backfield. The negative plays just keep adding up to Texas Tech. Now they go screen nice to Taj call. Brooks. Nice, excellent call. And look at that tackle in open space again. Defensively, Tanner McAllister making the play, number two in white. And that's what the Cowboys do, Spencer. Got a lot of teams we saw today on every network not make well that 11 yard gain that was made possible because of the games and deals and recognizing that it was an excellent play call in that situation may not be enough but ultimately tim what it showed you is that you can dial up the right play against this aggressive front for oklahoma state they put a lot of pressure on you but you got to pick your spots mcnamara who's really been booting it well he's also getting worn out i think and it looks like oklahoma state's taking a timeout hmm. oklahoma state on their first time out of the half Probably didn't have anybody, everybody out there that they needed. Or maybe one too many. Well, Mike, Mike's coaching him up. He's, he's, he's holding his cool there, but he's letting the coaches understand that we got to get our personnel right, gentlemen. Yeah, that's the look of a coach like, what? Mm -hmm. We're having to call a timeout for this? Mm -hmm. I love his approach, man. He's a controlled aggression. Hey, Spencer, I thought he had, he was questioned about the lack of respect this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, look, he said, sure, we understand that the name and the logo on the helmet sometimes makes a difference. Look, Duke is always going to be higher in the polls when the basketball season begins. But he said, you know what? When my star running back, Jalen Warren, who's one of the top five running backs, is, uh, 
is not known for his first name, <laughs> then that, that, that could be problematic. This is a kid that's rushed, rushed for over 1,000 yards this year. He says that's part of our culture, though. Yep. If uh, people are going to call him by another name, that just means you got to work a little harder so people will remember your name. I think he was justified in that. <laughs> his name is Jalen. Don't call me Ty Warren. <laughs> 56 yard boot. We'll be right back. Fox College Football is sponsored by Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. And by Dr. Pepper. Delicious ice cold Dr. Pepper. The one fans deserve. That's my baby. Oh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> Rico Jeffers. One of the many being celebrated tonight. Uh, long haul for these young men, so many of them. Rico's a senior out of Garland, Texas. He's gone through so much. He, there was a time when Texas Tech defensively, well, while Rico was here, mm -hmm. was the worst defense in the oh, country. Yeah, yeah. And they have really, under Keith Patterson, developed and matured. Sanders is in trouble. And he uses his legs to get out of trouble. And almost to the sticks for a first down. Well, Tyree Wilson, number 19, got after him, man. Didn't you see him come Ooh, around that did corner? He ever. Bent that corner and then leaned into him. And Sanders showed you got some foot speed. He can get away. But watch him bend this corner right here. Gets it high heels. Got those high pockets, too, right? Those long hips, man. That long stride and just clipped him right there on the end. Wonderful effort. Desmond Jackson, who played so well last week, off the shelf and back in there. Play fake to him, and Sanders is in trouble. And he's wrapped up. Nice defensive play. Great penetration there by Colin Schooler, number 17. He is the FBS tackle for loss leader. And you see the rushing yardage so far from a week ago tonight. It's been different for them. A little harder to come by. Jackson remains the setback, 27. And he'll tote it this time. Up to the 28, a gain of three before Reggie Pearson knocks him down. Casey Dunn, offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, doing a nice job of running away from the pressure. Texas Tech had a blitz dialed up from the play side of, that they went away from. So far, he's timing it up. Second and seven. Pressure again up the middle, and they got to Sanders. I don't think they called that a pass. It's picked up by Drew, number 90. Now they're going to call it incomplete. There had been no signal until such time as he got a little closer to the end zone. Drew came in with the pressure, number 90. Unfortunately, and you forced got, this play. Uh, you got one of your own guys being driven and pushed back into him. Yep. And that kind of aided and abetted the pressure on the quarterback. Third down and seven. Fans are smelling it here, and so is their head coach. <laughs> Sanders. Too much time. Way too much time. Oh, nice. Almost picked off. Oh, you see that closing speed? I there? mean, Ooh. Adrian Taylor Demerson had that one right in his sights and a lot of green grass or turf. In front of him, it'll be fourth and seven in a punt formation. I was so impressed with this closing speed, Tim. It was coming from both levels again. You, you mentioned Taylor Demerson did a wonderful job. So was Reggie Pearson, number 22. He came from that spur position back, and they converged. You talk about reading and reacting? That's the type of speed you're looking for on defense. Tom Hutton will boot it away. Adrian Fry in single safety. End over end. Fry will bring it. And again, great coverage by the Cowboys. All three levels, they get the job done, don't they? I mean, they're, they're special teams right there with them. Well, Thanksgiving Day, the tradition continues. Fox rolls along. We come together for food, family, and football. When Justin Fields and the Bears take on Jared Goff and the Lions, coverage begins with a special edition of the Fox NFL pregame show at 10.30 Eastern, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. That guy is taking field spot in Ohio State's playing exceptionally well, man.
Uh, people may be right now beginning to realize that Oklahoma State's run defense is fantastic. First in the Big 12, fifth in the country. Their pass defense is also just as dominant. On the slant, that's Geiger. And that's the first down. Well, what a great job of threading that one. The Geiger in traffic, got bodies all around him. Three defenders and just finding that little soft spot in that void. Nice pitch and catch. Well, Spencer, that's their first positive play in the air. Mm -hmm. Had some passing yards. They're up to 14 now. 23 in the game <laughs> for Texas Tech. They were in negative yardage in passing through the entire first quarter. But they're still in range, though. That's the whole key. You're possession away. Smith. He's got to be careful. Yeah, that. that's, that's Miles Price. We played very well a week ago in that victory against Iowa State. Loses a yard on that play. And you're right, that was more of a lateral than pass, and it was a tough take given where he caught it. It will be second down 11. And a conversation should take place with Smith at some point in time. Maybe not right now, but he has to be mindful of the fact that, that was perilously close to being a lateral. And suddenly he's got a, a live wire in his hand. He's an athlete, and there's no question about it. He's gifted. Some of the off-platform throws I've seen this kid make is Patrick Mahomes-esque, and I'm not trying to compare him to him. I'm just saying the raw stuff, this guy's got. He's a dude. Smith. Here comes the heat. And again has to unload. This time does get it beyond the original line of scrimmage, so no grounding, I suspect, although we do see a flag. David Alvarez will have it for us. It's taking a while after a bit of a conversation. Didn't see any extracurricular activity going Nor did on I. there. And uh, again, he unloaded it. He was outside mm -hmm. the tackle box. And as long as the ball was thrown beyond the original line of scrimmage, there should be no grounding. Mike's about as confused as we are. Holding defense number zero. The hold occurred behind the line of scrimmage. It's a 10 yard penalty and still second down. A Christian Holmes. So I gather the conversation was about where on the field was the actual holding to determine how long the penalty would be. There's Christian, the redshirt senior, transfer from Missouri. That's the guilty party. Outstanding play right there. Brock Martin comes up to make it. Brock is on that left side of that defensive end again. Tracy Tyler, Tyler Lacy rather, is on the opposite side. And, and I'll tell you, Tim, when those two get going upfield, they do a wonderful job of allowing them to play a single high safety look. And that means more numbers, and the run game is going to struggle against that look. Wonderful compliment to what they're doing All right. on the back end. It is third down. And four with the ball at midfield, and we've got a timeout taken by Texas Tech. This is a Texas Tech. great opportunity for them Go after the, the penalty. The third down and four coming after the quick timeout texas tech with an opportunity here to get on the board get something to feel positive about offensively before the intermission they're going empty here with five wides there's no doubt and again I, I thought they should have run this the last time they were in this formation but they opted for a pass let's see what happens here uh, we got a false start well credit oklahoma state's defense mm -hmm. stemming there prior to the snap that pre-snap movement will bring it every offense. time Number 51, five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's T.J. Storm at the left tackle. Senior transfer from TCU. And it looked like, you know, you're right, that Oklahoma State does do some stemming from time to time, but that was just the guy not holding his water. And just that little quiver shake was what draw, drew him offside. Xavier White now in the backfield. That makes the third and nine so much more difficult than third and four. Donovan Smith in trouble. And down he goes again. Yeah, you're right. 
They're not going to let him get loose. Devin Harper was just unbelievable in that play, Tim. He did a wonderful job of spying, giving a full drop like he was dropping back into coverage, but yet he came right back down and filled that middle of the field, understanding you've got an athletic quarterback. Wonderful execution by Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, of finding a way to keep this guy contained. Because that, is, that is a third sack, Spencer, and uh, ten negative plays by his defense. And I, I beg your pardon for interrupting you there. This guy's been pretty valuable, hasn't he, McNamara? He almost got that one to pull Q in at the five-yard line. 57-yard boot. Pacific Life Game Summary sponsoring more than 150 years strong. A look at our game summary courtesy Pacific Life. And Spencer, let's just say missed opportunities for Oklahoma State and Texas Tech has been stuffed. But they're still in it. Well, they say big games are lost, not won. And it's usually mistakes that does it. And, and I, I would argue this is a big game for both these ball clubs. And it really comes down to whether or not you're executing and have command of what you practice all week long. You've got 20 hours to get it right in a single week. And it's a tall order. But Texas Tech has struggled on the execution side. Richardson. Well, that's nine yards on first down. Oklahoma State could really change the pace and tempo of this game with a quality drive before halftime. They have to feel like they've left some points out there. No question about it. And while they have stolen some possessions from Tech, they themselves still just got six points. That was a little curl pattern run by Richardson. He had to make an adjustment on the throw, but he made the catch for five yards for first down. Nice job delivering this one out. This kid right here, I'm telling you, man, um, they tried to get the ball to him different ways, but he's a special talent, I think. Richardson. Texas Tech just flying all over there. That's Colin Schooler again. I mean, he's, he's exactly the kind of defender that Jim Knowles would love to coach, isn't he? I mean, he is just wreaking havoc no matter where he goes, and he's gained a lot of weight. He was once a safety, and now he's moved down to linebacker, really bulked up over the last year or two. I've got some friends out of Mission Bay, Bay where he, he came from, Tim, and they told me about him a long time ago. He's been around a long time, transferred in, of course, and has helped this ball club immediately, but he has been a star from the birth. From the, from the time he stepped on the field, he was destined to be a, a great player. His brother, as you know, went to Texas as a transfer. Mm -hmm. Flag right. down. Sanders may have a free one. Let's see. Plenty of time to throw. Looks deep for Bray, and it's incomplete. He was well defended by Demarcus Fields, 23, who is really the best man coverage corner that Keith Patterson has in his secondary. Well, Let's Spencer, check the marker. Spencer Sanders never had a chance to get his platform set to make a throw like that. That's a big downfield throw where you've got to get your shoulders upfield, plant it, point it in the direction you want to go. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield, offense, five yard. That penalty will be declined. Third down. <laughs> Wouldn't have mattered, as it turns out. Yeah, they did not have enough on the line of scrimmage. Three for eight on third down conversions for the Cowboys tonight. And this is a third and long. Sanders nice. over the middle. It's caught. And it is John Paul Richardson moved the chains out to the 45. A 13-yard gain. First of all, he was clean, right? Spencer Sanders was clean on this play. Great job up front. Josh Seals, Woodard Company, all of them. Springfield did a wonderful job of keeping him clean so he can complete that play. A wide receiver screen out to Richardson with a convoy. Bray with a pretty good block out in front. Colin Schooler, though, is able to slip in there and make the stop after a gain of six. I'm going to be picky here. You know, Richardson's got to pick his feet up like that when he's in traffic. And just click the heels right there, and he comes down. That's too easy. Second and four. Slant. 
for Martin. What a great defensive play. It was. Falls incomplete and Rashad Williams again. And Spencer, you touched on it. They've been picking on him. Mm -hmm. He's been up to the challenge. Well, Wilson Williams did a wonderful job of getting that left hand in or in around. You can see it comes right back inside. Don't know what the right hand is doing, but he knows where that official is, so he's clean with the left one. And he's jacking himself up right there, excited about the fact that he's balling out, man. It's, it's, it comes down with his offensive defense, Tim. It's about making individual plays. Third down and four. Martin to the bottom of your screen. John Paul Richardson in motion. Slant again. Martin first down. We're going after Williams again on that side. And they love to, to attack him, but they're, they're moving the ball with pace and tempo here. Tim going to try to post some points to get out here at halftime with more than six. No, nice. time, to, no time to get greedy. Richardson inside the 35, and he got popped by Rico Jeffers. <laughs> he felt that one, a gain of nine. It'll be second down and less than a yard to go. Man, too, the safety got it. Mm. Boy. <laughs> right underneath the armpit. <laughs> That's the one you feel in the morning when you get back in the hot tub. Yeah, make a change of mind. On second and a yard. That'll be enough. Richardson was pushed back late, but he got the first down, a gain of four. Nico Jeffers again on the tackle. Tell you what, this Texas Tech defense has really acquitted itself well. I mean, they're not giving up huge big big plays. They've taken some shot as Oklahoma State. I'll tell you, I think for backfield, he's got some question marks back there. They've done a wonderful job of keeping that to a low war. Are you noticing Jalen Warren hasn't come back in? Mm-hmm. Uh, remember, Bedlam is next week. They're going to need him, man. They're going to need him badly. And there goes Dominic Richardson again. Now, they do have... Uh, some reinforcements back there. We saw four of them with a record-breaking night a week ago, but Jalen Warren is a difference maker, and he stumbled on that particular play, came out of the game. We've not seen him since. Now it's second down and three, and again, Richardson in the backfield with Sanders. will carry it again, and Texas Tech is up to it. Well, one thing is clear. You can see that Warren moves much better in traffic, and he's able to because of his size and makeup and build to avoid those first would-be tacklers, Tim. And they're a different ball club when he's not in the lineup. Oh, absolutely. So a timeout taken. Warren, by the way, has carried it 10 times for 20 yards. While we have this timeout, here's what's coming up on the State Farm Halftime Show. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, Oklahoma holds on against Iowa State ahead of their matchup in Bethlehem next week. Baylor looking to keep their Big 12 title game hopes alive, and we'll look ahead to next week's Ohio State-Michigan showdown. How do you do when it comes to that one, Tim and Spencer? Back to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sarge is with us. A little how do you do. How about that? I like that. <laughs> Listen, the Warren... Exit may, may only be to give him a, a little bit of a rest, but it is consequential. Well, one thing about it, I don't think they're going to change what they're doing, and it's probably, if anything, going to make this game go faster. Get back there, yeah. and weapon healthy. Just as I say, and he comes back into the game, mm. so he's okay. Third down and four, and he may be in there Deep for this play right here. Four wides. Sanders using his resourcefulness. He's going to be shy. There's a flag down. And a marker down. Time. Yep, that's uh, Kasi Eldridge, number 20. It came in there. There was a marker down. So we'll check it. So a decision to make coming up for Gundy pending the outcome of this. Yeah. Penalty flag. Rico Jeffers was out there covering the Holding. back out of the backfield. Warren. Defense, number six, 10-yard penalty. Oh, you called it. The yardage yeah. will result in a first down. You know, Warren got up off the ground. Again, Jeffers is, is athletic enough to cover him in space, and Mike is looking at it. And again, he went down because he was held, and uh, they caught him. And actually, Sanders had already scampered away from Warren, mm -hmm. so it was away from where the play was eventually going to go. But just having Warren out there makes it more difficult to defend for anybody. Only the second penalty against Texas Tech. 
but an inopportune time. Close In the corner, corner wow. touchdown. It's Richardson, Oklahoma State. Taylor Demerson, Timmy, back in that corner, that shake route to the corner. It's been open all night. They've gotten it once, but he fell down earlier. This time he's going to make sure he gets this move. The shake route, the nice touch, and <laughs> you put him in your hip pocket, man. That's what happened. It's, it's, they call it the shake route for that very reason. Once you get your hips turned, you're out of position, you're going to go shaking down to the ground. Unbelievable execution. Something we haven't seen as a mainstay tonight for Sanders. Richardson with his second touchdown. Sanders is 15th of the year and number 45 in his career. Come on, come on. 13 to nothing, our score. Just 26 ticks left. Here's the penalty, Spencer, that keyed this touchdown, the hold on Warren. And you mentioned that it was only two, a couple of penalties at the time, and on it was awful. Again, Rico Jeffers just grabs him, pulls him down to the ground. I'm not sure what he was thinking on that play. I mean, if the ball's not coming your way in particular, you're going to get flagged for that. You can't tackle a guy in space like that. Meantime, John Paul Roberts Richardson's did a wonderful job of executing on the corner post route or the corner route to get open for a score. Geiger will let that one go through. Well, Spencer touched on it at the beginning of the game. Most disrespected Power 5 team is the one you're watching tonight. Everyone talks about the path, the path to the Invitational. All right, that's what I call it. <laughs> and, and Oklahoma State, you would think, would have the same path Oklahoma would. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you hear about path, you don't hear about Oklahoma State. You don't. Well, we've said it ad nauseum. We live in a world of images and impressions, and unfortunately... You know, it's changed in recent years, but the currency of this game is tradition and history. And we've seen it impacted. We saw it probably more prominently in 2014 with Baylor and TCU on that final weekend. On the sideline, incomplete for Price. Well, he had an opportunity. That was uh, go get it, young man. Tanner McAllister once again back there defensively. That was into double coverage, and he comes up a little gimpy and uh, will nurse himself back to the sideline, finally go down on the ground. They're going to have to tend to him here. That pressure off the edge has just been nonstop. It, it, it has been nonstop. Again, Brock Martin was one of those other defenders. The opposite of him, Tyler Lacey, number 89, both bookends, shutting it down, man, on the perimeter. And you saw the help that uh, Jason Taylor the second was giving to Tanner McAllister in the coverage against Geiger. I go back to, again, the, the Oklahoma State scenario. And Mike Gundy pointed out to us, he said, look, until we beat Oklahoma in Bad Lemon, it's been a long time since they have. I think you got to go back to 11. That, you see where he turned his ankle yeah, there. Price. I think that's going to be the reason to, to your point, Spencer, images and impressions are Oklahoma's just better, period. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to tell you, I've mm -hmm. seen both teams a lot. No, you and I have. Not this year. Most complete team in this league is the one you're watching right now, Oklahoma State. And I don't think it's that close. Mm -hmm. I mean, their defense, the way it's built, they look more like an SEC team than Oklahoma looks like an SEC team. Their future home. The way their defense is playing, Timmy, they're top five in all of the major categories that matter yep. in about seven different categories. I really believe George is the only defense I've seen that you could say is officially superior mm -hmm. to Jim Knowles' defense. Second and ten, Smith. Comeback route incomplete for Azukama. He was hoping that he could draw a flag, but Christian Holmes got there in time. This is such a physical secondary for Oklahoma State. Yeah, the redshirt senior just really showing you his athleticism and confidence. These guys are out here on an island playing off coverage now, but they're comfortable squatting and getting down in front of you guys and playing bump as well. Third down and 10, and here goes Sir Roderick Thompson. It's about five and a quick timeout taken by the Cowboys. They'd like to maybe have a chance at a block kick here. Getting a little greedy before halftime. <laughs> well, at some point in time, his style points are going to be important, Tim, just for the very reason you mentioned a minute ago. Yeah. He's a good man right there now. He is. And, uh, you know, I... I love the way he personalizes his profession. Yep. And he said that Nick Holt, who is a new analyst and a former defensive coordinator at a number of places, including most recently at Purdue, where he coached his son, who was an undersized linebacker, 
He said Nick came up to him shortly after the McGuire hire had happened, and he said, remember, Sonny, this is a great opportunity that you've got to pour into these kids mm -hmm. and make a difference with what's remaining. And, you know, to McGuire's credit, and you and I chatted with him before the game tonight, they're friends, and uh, there's no doubt that with a year remaining on a multi-year contract, Cumbie wants to stay here and continue to be in charge of this offense. And uh, McGuire is just going to take a look and continue to work on recruiting. That's uh, Joey right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Joey's going to put an emphasis on, on the persons and the personalities he brings in here. Yeah. And he understands the relationship with players are going to have to be paramount. And for those of you that don't know anything about this guy, he is a Texas legend. Oh, yeah. Joey McGuire and your old friend D.W. Rutledge oh, yeah. uh, told you all about him mm -hmm. from his days uh, as a high school legend. And Matt Rule had a lot to do with him getting to this point, he told us. I spoke a lot at these those annual meetings that DW had, the coaches, Texas Coaches High School Association, which he served as the executive director of so many years. They were in punt safe there, just letting that one bound all the way in about a 70-yard boot as it rolls all the way through the end zone, and that will end the first half. So, Spencer. Mm-hmm. It's been a tussle here defensively so far. Let's get you to Los Angeles where Mike Hill has uh, joined us. And a how do you do to you too, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Salute to you, Mr. Brando. Welcome to the State Farm Halftime Show. Long Our score. Cowboys defense dominant. Their offense not as sexy as maybe you'd like. That's all right. We'll talk a little more about that. <laughs> Coach Pete, Spencer Tillman with me right now. And Spencer, you love the snapshots and missed opportunities, but also big plays have been really the cornerstone for Oklahoma State. I'm really digging John Paul Richardson. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm loving the way that this kid is navigating right. He shows you he's able to keep his body, but they've been getting to him on jet sweeps and things of that nature. It's been so impressive. <laughs> making his mommy and daddy happy. Bucky Richardson, you know Bucky Richardson. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Remember that's Bucky? His, that's his papa right there, yeah. man. Yeah. And then the miscues ultimately for the opponents tonight have been just something that Sonny Cumbie's trying to figure out the conundrum with his quarterback, Donovan Smith, haven't found a solution. And then ultimately, it's been that trio that we talked about, remember? <laughs> Harper, <laughs> Richardson, all of them, Taylor. Those guys are unbelievably active tonight and around the ball early and often denying opportunities for this Texas Tech defense, offense. Cowboys will get it to start the second half, and if you recall, Texas Tech won the toss, received, went three and out immediately. This is a very important defensive series for Texas Tech. They need to keep the heat on Sanders. It hasn't been easy for him tonight. Cowboys have also put it on the ground a couple of times, but have managed to come away with their own recovery. So they have been, you know, on that uh, precarious line of maybe giving Texas Tech something a little easy. It hasn't happened to this point. They've been relatively efficient. But this series right here could tell the tale of the rest of this game for Texas Tech defensively. And there, oh, right wow. away, goes Warren. Jalen Warren doing what he does best. Those lo low shoulders and those short, choppy steps. Reggie Pearson with the saving tackle, and he's still down. Or Charlie Dickey, the offensive line coach, making some adjustments inside, giving him number seven the ball. He's the heart and soul, man. They start with him. And then Casey Dunn, of course, offensive coordinator, taking his cue. They collaborate and figure out how to make this thing work, and they're going back to the run game. Does a nice job of securing that ball. Three points of pressure up at the top. Hold it on to it, baby. Yep. Dominic Richardson comes in for him. It looked like at the end of that play, he took a knee to the helmet mm -hmm. and uh, may have been dinged a little bit, came out. That was a gain of two for Richardson. So second down and eight. Here's the end of that play we were talking about. As you see, the uh, left knee. That was Williams, the thigh to the, the head, right. the side of that helmet. Rashad Williams that got him. Looks to be okay, waiting to get back in there, though. I'll tell you, a knee to the helmet, man, is, is a tough one, though, brother. Great defensive work 
against Bryson Green. That's Blaine's brother as DeMarcus Fields, the outstanding cover corner on an island there, made the play. You got to have courage. You got to have heart. You got to have confidence. Fields does a wonderful job of trying to identify where that ball is. He's got as much right to it as the receiver in that situation. And Spencer says, hey, he's looking for a flag. I don't think he's going to get it. Third down and eight. Huge play here, albeit early in the second half for Texas Tech. Four wides. Going to take a shot here with pressure staring you in the face. Let's see if they bail out. Something. Texas Tech is coming. Pressure. He gets rid of it. And it is incomplete. Knocked away. That was Davian Taylor Dimerson that did the job, and it's going to be a punt formation coming up. But I think the fact that they're going to Richardson again, man, he's mindful of where he is on the field. This is a heck of an effort right oh, here. Was it ever? Yep. You know, give give credit where credit is due. When you've got Tur that Taylor Dimerson there making a great play on the ball, what a wonderful effort in targeting the guy who you think can make plays for you. Got to give Tracy some love, too. That's Bucky's wife. That's, that's, that's her son. <laughs> Always smiling. Yeah. Bucky's a pretty good golfer, by the way. Mm -hmm. High end over in boot. Adrian Fry with a fair catch at the 12. I really thought that that was a key series for Texas Tech to open this second half. You cannot fall behind 20 to nothing. Three scores to a team like Oklahoma State. As you look at the numbers offensively a week ago for Donovan Smith and tonight, again, I, I just think that clock in your head, Spencer, is an overdrive because the Cowboys are bringing such great pressure with a four-man rush. Well, and I think this is the one thing you have in common, you know, in the TCU game. You have a quarterback that no one has seen a whole lot of, has a great, unbelievable first performance, then it's tough to stack those performance on top. Yeah. Even if you're a coach's son and aforementioned case, and in this case, you've got a guy that's got a running back's coach as a father and, and knows the game, been around it, but it's tough to string those big wins up together. Only 31 total yards offensively to 441 per game. What they average, and Sir Roderick Thompson takes it ahead, runs right into Israel Antoine, gain of a yard. And that, listen, just picking up one or two on first down is better than losing three mm -hmm. to five, which was the story much of the first half. Well, Tim, they just had nine yards rushing in that first half, which is incredible. You're not going to do much if you're one handed like that. Is Jim Knowles like the favorite for the Royals this year? He should be. He's, He's got to be. Four man rush. Slant. Thrown behind the receiver that time. Dalton Rigdon, 86. And again, I just think he was rushed there. Third down to nine. I just continue to harp on Harper and these other guys, how close they are. And again, just getting significant push up front. Antoine and company. Brendan Evers. Just great push right in the lap of the quarterback, affecting the throw and the release. It's a total team effort. Red Raiders really need a first down. Give their defense a break. One for seven on third down. This is dark. It was right to Mason Tharp, number 80. Move the chains. That is a big catch for a first down. Tharp's a big target, too. So you had trips to that field, and he was the innermost receiver, closest to the quarterback, and he just drills this one. Sits it right down in front of him. You got Malcolm Rodriguez standing there, number 20, along with Harper. They're defending. But, man, that was a laser. Texas Tech is without their starting tight end, Travis Kuntz. He's banged up, unable to go tonight. So Roderick Thompson, a little bit like Jalen Warren, hits those shoulders square and stays low. It's lower than the defender. Tanner Mac McAllister making the stop, a three-yard game. Now the 5'11", 195-pound senior just stuck his nose right in there, McAllister did, showing you he's up to the task. And there's no fear in this group, man. There may not be any, a lot of names on these short lists for postseason individual honors, but to, together... I don't think there's a defense that plays in concert better with one another than Oklahoma State. Second and seven. That's Azukama. Ball, the ball's out. Time. Ball is out. Cowboys all over it. And they have got it. Tim, we've been talking about Tyler Lacey and company all day long and Brock Martin the opposite side. But number 89 is the rush in that's involved in creating that. Who's balled in? Rodriguez is Johnny on the spot. With his battery made in there as well, Devin Harper, Malcolm, always going to be around the ball. Malcolm did come away with the recovery, and again, the motion, this was a problem with the snap to start, and then the reach-in defensively 
Tyler Lacey yeah. knocked it out of there. Tyler Lacey was the guy. That's what I was saying, man. He's the one that you need to watch because he is he is the guy that's affecting and keeping a book in on the structure of this offense. Now the snap was uh, not exactly where you'd want it by Dawson Deaton. And uh, well, that's the third fumble tonight for Texas Tech, but the first one they've lost possession with. Cowboys now at the 25 after the gift. And a little pitch right in front of you. Pass to Jaden Bray. And Bray inside the 15. Down to the 10. Markers down. A little narrow inside in the round as it wasn't all the way on the edge. And that's why the eye attention was so affected by that play. Technically a pass. The ball was pitched forward. Holding. Offense. Number 28. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. That's Blaine Green who gets tagged, and that negates a 16 yard game. You can see Green here is on the inside, right? From that inside block position. He's going to get that hand and just yeah. kind of pull him toward him, right? That was Pearson. You got to let that go, man. You get a guy locked up, and it was an easy block, too. I'd rather see him cut block him than as opposed to just grab him and hold him and walk him out of there. Desmond Jackson is now checked in, 27, in the backfield. And the Cowboys are deep at that position, but Warren is their star. Batted down. Great penetration off the edge. Tony Bradford, 97. A junior from Houston North Shore batted it down. Second big play for him today. And again, he loves to play that nose tackle position, 95. But now they've got him in a three technique. He's not the true nose over the top. That was uh, Jalen Hutchinson in that position. Bradford worked from a three technique outside, got those hands up despite being blocked by two guys. Wonderful job of affecting the quarterback without getting to him. Wow, Spencer Sanders' offense is going the wrong way after the turnover. False start. This is a false start. Offense. Number 67, five-yard penalty. Still second down. Yeah, Cole Birmingham, right? Yep. Well, to Coach Peterson's point, offensively, you know, Oklahoma State missing some opportunities here. You can see Cole just gets that left foot and kicks out there. You know, a lot of times that happens when guys are mindful or worried about a guy beating them to the edge, and I'm not quite sure what pulled him off there because there was no imminent threat from the outside. I really enjoyed the conversation that Sarge had with both uh, Emmanuel Acho and Coach Pete about mm -hmm. the playoff uh, story, or invitational story, in my opinion. This pass is down the scene, and it is caught by Blaine Green. Just shy of the line to make for a first down. It'll be about a yard away. A uh, great redemption by Cole Birmingham, providing the protection that you needed on that kickout play. He does a nice job of sealing that in to give the quarterback time enough to complete it. Monroe defending on the back end, Tim. Excellent pitch and catch. Nice recovery. Execution by the offensive line. It's going to be third and about a yard and a half. Third and a long one, we'll call it. That's a heck of a hit by Monroe. Mm -hmm. And he needed to make it to the senior out of Houston. And it looks like our referee is going to take a look at something here. Maybe a call down for a possible replay. Hmm. Could it have been a, a hit? The hit by Monroe? Uh, game management to the 20 yard line, please. Game management, wow. That's a big deal here. It takes a village. <laughs> oh, there's some little uh, some Bud debri Light. debris on the foot. Uh, a little Came debris out, the out there. Yeah. That is not a tortilla. That's that same guy that was the full one for the pole one from <laughs> last week ago. <laughs> Couple of weeks back at TCU. Yep. Well, they, defensively, Tech needs to hold them to a field goal here to stay within a two-possession game. If they were to hold him to three, it would be a 16 to nothing game. This is a big, big situation coming up. So the public address announcement is being made now. Tell them, please, game management, come and take over because they could be penalized for this if it were to continue. Fox College Football is sponsored by Wendy's, mm. official breakfast of NCAA football. And by Cadillac. So a couple of warnings have been given from the public address 
announcer to the crowd. A couple of uh, beer cans were thrown onto the field, and once you've been given the warning, you can be penalized 15 yards. That doesn't seem to be quite enough for Mike Gundy, who's really upset. And he may be upset, Spencer, because, you know, he, he could have gone fast. He might have wanted to go up tempo with only a yard to get and stopping play as they did might not have been to his advantage. I'm not sure, but that could have been part of the conversation. He's upset that they wasted a perfectly good beer. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what it was. That's not making any sense. Desmond Jackson in the backfield, third and one. Play fake. That pass is incomplete, and the flag comes down. Wow, a little uh, extracurricular going on on the sideline. Get a little chippy now, Tim. Well, if this goes against Texas Tech, it would be a horrendous penalty to give up when you just got to stop and may have been in a position to force them to go for a field goal. Holding. Defense, number one. Half the distance to the goal, the yardage results, and a first down. Keyshawn Merriweather. Yeah, that got him. He's a veteran player. Yeah, he came off the edge, and again, he's trying to get the back out of the backfield. He's holding. Yeah. Listen, he, he the, the, the difficult truth there is he's got help on that defensive call. Yeah. You got a middle a safety guy coming down to have the perimeter for you. you that's where knowing your defensive schemes comes into play. There's no need for him to hold on that play. Well, Christian has really been playing well of late. Really led them against Iowa State. Five tackles, four solos against them. They really need this stop and hold the Cowboys to only three if they can. Nice penetration. Jackson. It's a late push from his offensive lineman. Hits the chippiness that will come in the aftermath after a tackle is being made. And we've seen it oftentimes, Spencer. There was a time when forward progress would stop these scrums, and they're not calling them nearly as often as they once did. Mm -hmm. In fact, allowing the, the Reggie Bush push <laughs> to be more commonplace than it used to be. I thought Schooler was going to get in there. He shot the gap and was in the backfield, had a chance to make a play. Second and goal. Jackson remains the setback. Bree is the receiver to the bottom of your screen, and there goes Jackson. Extra effort gets him inside the two. And the stop by Jalen Hutchins, 95, with gain of three. I gotta give credit because I think that that just jet type motion, really fast, up tempo, really affects the flow of these these linebackers for Texas Tech. They are getting to the edge and moving because of that suddenness. John Paul Richardson is usually the guy that they're moving in that direction so fast a lot of pre-snap movement here and here comes john paul again nice slant oh, incomplete dropped, dropped wow. by tay martin all right he knows it and that was rashad williams defending tim and i the guy they've been going after all night that ball should have been there the motion away to create the individual matchup nice job of sitting for williams on the inside but he still got beat the nice move to move him to get his hip squared and stalled. Boy, that's, that's a rarity when Tay Martin has one climb on him like that, Spence. Tanner Brown. So the Texas Tech defense manages to hold him to three. Again, Spencer, they, they're hanging around, you know. Mike Gundy not at all pleased with the proceedings. That coach right there is pretty pumped. They're still in the game. Fox College Football is sponsored by Uber Eats. Tonight I'll be eating with Uber Eats, and I won't tell you what I'm having. Mm. And by High Noon Hard Seltzer. Please sunset responsibly. It's too late for a bone-in. <laughs> Check that out. 16 to nothing, Cowboys with the lead. Just underway third quarter. Tanner Brown will kick it away. Texas Tech has just really been precariously staying in this game because their defense has stifled the Cowboys in the red zone most of the night. Total yards, a total blowout. 281 to 43 for Oklahoma State. But uh, drops like the one made by Tay Martin just a moment ago have really kept Texas Tech in this thing. Here comes Geiger with it. Kalen Geiger with great speed. Stopped at the 21. And the closing speed of Oklahoma State right where it needs to be. And the sacks and the negative play, Spencer, 
I mean, Donovan Smith is going to be seeing this in his dreams. Well, it's the regular cast of characters that always are part of this Oklahoma State rush defense. Again, Devin Harper and company, Malcolm Rodriguez, all of them. And the in rushers have been outstanding. Brock Martin and Tyler Lacey have been outstanding. As you look at Coach Knowles there in the middle with the black cap on and the white shirt. I'll tell you, if there's ever a defensive mind, I really appreciate his, his ethos, his way of coaching young men. He has a positive motivation as opposed to the threat. He prefers the challenge approach. One's a positive, one's a negative. Has tremendous implications for buy-in. Donovan Smith off the play fake. Looking long. Flag down. A pass interference is coming up. Lloyd Fungi, 19, the receiver. Jarek Bernard Converse would appear to be the guilty party. And you know, if you just identify that ball because it was a jump Defense, ball, essentially. Number 24, 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. Well, Converse was hugging him the whole way, man. He's five yards out. The ball's up in the air. There's no, nothing wrong with trying to identify the ball, but watch the contact here on the shoulder, grabbing with the right hand, left hand, and you're hugging him in the back right here. Well, there's nothing wrong with a penalty like that when you know your defense has your back, and this one does. You don't want to give up a, you know, a play of that magnitude. Those explosives can really turn, particularly when you're the road team. Sometimes it's like a bad free throw shooter, Spencer. It's a good foul. Well, when you're out there on an island, though, it can, you know, it can show you a lot about the character of a guy, too, man. Oh, yeah. Tech has received more penalty yards, 60, than regular yards, 43. Looking again for Cleveland. Incomplete. Trey Cleveland, the intended receiver there, the 6'4 red shirt freshman from Longview, Texas. And Christian Holmes defending, and again, another one on one shot. We've been talking about this from the beginning of the show. Who's going to step up and make individual plays? Either offense or defense. It's, that's what this game is going to come down to. Cleveland prepped at Pine Tree High School in Gregg County, Texas. Second down to 10. As Ukama comes to the bottom of your screen. Smith. Looking that way, incomplete. Overthrown. Eric Azukama was the intended receiver. McAllister over there with him. Well, the accuracy I saw in this first game as a starter, last time when he started out, Tim is not there today. No. You know, Smith is 5 for 15, 33 yards. That's all. I mean, that's that's paltry, man. Well, as good as Iowa State's defense was, it was good enough to give Oklahoma State their only loss, although I would argue they were, they're, they're a bad spot away from being undefeated. Hmm. That game in Ames. On a fourth and two, they didn't convert around midfield, but man, oh man. Now that, that Cowboy defense has been really, really suffocating. Xavier White in the backfield on third and ten. Smith looping it long again. And he just overthrows Kellen yep. Geiger. I mean, he just ran out of real estate. Yeah, this kid is young, and, you know, deep with accuracy is one of the requisite throws you've got to be able to make to be effective, particularly in this league, even though it's kind of transitioning. Sonny Cumbie's got to find a way to communicate to him that deep with accuracy, and then on some of the earlier stuff that they missed was miscommunication. That ball was just clear four yards yep. over the head of the would-be receiver. He had a step. He really did. Yep. Well, the... Texas Tech punter, six punts for an average of 59. So McNamara has been on target punting the football tonight. Brennan Presley is back deep. You know, we haven't called his name in the offense for Oklahoma State at all. We do have a marker down, so hold everything. So we got a flag down. We have a flag down. So we are going to uh, wait for David Alvarez to let us know. Here the kick, holding, we take the break. receiving team, number 39. Half a to the goal, first down. Time out on the field. Now we can take the break. <laughs> they never make this easy, do they? <laughs> Fox College Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. That penalty was significant. Oklahoma State will now start inside their 10-yard line. So the Red Raiders, if they can get a three and out. 
Got to have some decent field position when we come back. And ultimately, if they can't stop him, they're gonna, this is going to be a slow bleed. Oh, yeah. Dominic Richardson remains the setback. Jalen Warren's been in and out of the lineup. They love to have him tote it 25 to 30 times, but he's not completely healthy. And uh, Colin Schooler involved in that tackle. It's second down at six coming up. And ideally, you want to keep him to three yards per tote, and then you can have some, at least from a percentage standpoint, of getting the ball back. But if they're averaging four, seven on the throw game, Tim, that's not a good combination. Richardson breaks one big tackle. Mm. Look at him go. Well, you don't see that often. And he just ripped right through the first tackle. 16 Merritt. yards. Krishan yeah. Merriweather finally got a hold of him, man. But that, as you said, that first step was explosive. It was upfield. And he showed you a nice open field move and tried to get on the on his high horse. He, he, he ran it. through right through. He ran right through Rico Jeffers. Yep. That's the longest run for Oklahoma State tonight. And Merriweather, who made the tackle, is a little nicked up. And you could make the argument, because that was the longest run, that they really held Oklahoma State in check, at least on the ground, for the most part. Is this, you don't see that often. No, nope, no, nope, you really don't. Nice individual effort and ability to get upfield, and that, that that's the type of run that defines what they want to do. That's the reason why I said two plays ago that the downside of having them pinned back is when they run the ball effectively, Tim, they're going to just eat up the clock. This is going to be a 14-play drive. Mm -hmm. It's a way that they steal possessions from it. And again, amazing that Mike Gundy, a pure air raid guy that just loves to chuck it all over the place, that he's doing this with his team. Oh, Sanders dear. with his legs once again with an appreciable gain. And this is an, an effect, you know, he's doing for his team what Caleb Williams did for his team today for Oklahoma. He could not pass it today, mm -hmm. but he made big plays with his legs that in the end wound up being enough. And they're making this Texas Tech defense work, Tim. Yep. Sideline to sideline, occasionally over the pop in the middle. So a pair of 16-yard jaunts in the run game for Oklahoma State. Richardson again negotiates past midfield to the 49 of Texas Tech. And you can sense now that the Red Raiders may be getting a, a little winded on this side of the ball. Tim, let's keep our mindset and our eyes focused on how Texas Tech tends to deal with this run game right now for the Cowboys. They're probably going to try to do it with numbers. That means they're going to have a single high safety look, typically, because that's the only way you're going to be able to stop them. And the one thing Sanders is not doing... That's exactly what they're doing. You see here Richardson taking it on the stretch play, cuts it back in. He'll still be a yard shot. Spencer Sanders is not making the mistakes that he made before. And he's also as healthy as he's ever been, which I think has a lot to do with the Cowboys' success. I think he got enough for the first down. They're just moving the chains. So it is first and ten. They got to take a shot here because they got the, the look that they're looking for. <laughs> Richardson. <laughs> Well, they, they don't have to take it, but Timmy, it's there because right yeah. now Texas Tech has been forced to populate the box with numbers, and they're in a single high safety look, which is those hole shots that we talked about right around the hash marks are going to be there for the take. Well, they had a 38 and a 37 yard catch for Martin. Six plays on this drive, rushes for 45 yards. He had 99 yards receiving, and John Paul Richardson 44 yards receiving that tandem in the first half, each with five catches. We'll see the uh, play selection there. Always looking for balance. Sanders, uh-oh, he deked him, and his receiver fell down. So he goes to the mm -hmm. safety valve, Richardson, on the check down, and I think he may have, well, he's about a half yard shy of the first down, it appears. So what Keith Patterson did some really intriguing things with his coverage there. He had a safety yep. come down and swap roles. Third, and yep. I uh, beg your pardon, it will be third and long, a third and 11. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. So third down and really more than 10. There's Keith Patterson. Boy, what a tremendous job he's done in keeping this defense together. Mm -hmm. That's Bray in motion. Sanders with plenty of time. Oh, he got it. Martin again, and he laid 
out for it, but not quite get there. Martin got knocked off of his he course, did. Yep. trying to come on that over, deep over route, and it's there. Again, it doesn't matter how you get to it and build it. You have plenty of protection to get there. Nice job of making the guy miss an open field, Tim. It just shows you that was Taylor Demerson yep. back defending at safety that he made miss in the open field. Just but for that recorrection, yep. he gets open. Just a little bit of a bump, right? Mm -hmm. And that can make, make all the difference. So Tech's defense holds on, and Hutton will boot it away. Lane Mannix now back deep. And did they stop it at the one? I think they may have. Oh, beautiful defense. <laughs> Nope, nope, they're going to say no. Oh, he really? Through. Yep. He can't cross the plane, so it will be a touchback. In college football, you cannot cross the plane, and that's what happened here. Mannix is going to have to yeah. investigate not, that. Remember, it's not the NFL rule. A lot of people confuse this for the NFL rule. It is not. Touchback. 16 to nothing, our score once again. Uh, you see the ball being knocked backwards by Presley. And we'll show you what uh, Mike Gundy had to say to both uh, he and Corey Black as they made their way back to the sidelines in just a moment. Quarterback change. Baron Morton has come into the game to replace Smith. Hmm. They quickly throw it out to Azakama. He's not touched it as much as I'm sure they'd like. He barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. And the Cowboys have been all over him tonight. Devin Harper making the tackle. Baron Morton, four-star recruit, freshman out of Eastland, Texas, one of 11 quarterbacks nominated for the 2020 National High School Player of the Year Award. He is a big-time talent. Hopefully he can give them some of the accuracy that they've been missing with Donovan Smith. Really struggled in that department tonight. Taj Brooks is in the backfield. And again, has to pull it down in a hurry and loses yardage. Colin Oliver. This stingy defense is just suffocating <laughs> this uh, offense. 39 plays, 41 yards. Think about that. Well, if it's not Brock Martin, Colin Oliver, Brent Kopensky, all of those guys that play on that left side, 10 at the defensive end, have been so active tonight. And reacting and responding to initially being blocked and redirected, affecting the quarterback. This is a clinic on defense. Yeah, it is. Texas Tech has 1.3 yards per play offensively in this game. Azukamo was the intended receiver. So nothing doing in a punt formation. So now, actually, after that miss, it's 1.1 yard per play for Texas Tech tonight. And the big picture story is less than maybe a year and a half, two years ago, this was a passing conference, and everybody was talking about <laughs> how, you know, yeah. much of a sieve the defenses were in this conference. Yeah. Yeah, now they're just not pretty they're enough. Not, and they're not, not yeah. saying anything about them. Yeah. Time out here. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, State. Texas Tech on their first time out Oklahoma of State took it. 30 seconds in late. I'm curious, Spencer, mm -hmm. with Bedlam coming up, all right, would you think, or you said in the last drive, the last sequence for Oklahoma State, they had what they needed to take some shots, chose not to. You think he's maybe holding a few things in his hip pocket for Bedlam? Well, I mean, yeah, perhaps. But, I, again, the bottom line is their run game is so strong, Tim, there's nobody that they can't force to populate the box. I think they're that good from an offensive standpoint. Now, yeah, they're not making a lot of vertical throws that they used to make two, three, four, five years ago. But they don't need to do that. Again, they're affecting people the same way with a conservative running game for the most part, yeah. making you defend it. Well, let's let's not forget, if not for a stumble by the receiver on a trick play, they would have scored a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Tay, Tay Martin dropped a touchdown right on the numeral a little earlier, so it could be a lot worse than 16 egg at this stage. But, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past, I would not put it past Gundy to hold on and be a little bit conservative. What with a full half of play for Oklahoma to watch. That's a 57 yard boot. And Ram Power Plays is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. And these power players, John Paul Richardson and Tay Martin, they have been the most productive offensively. And Spencer, I think 
both of them would say we've not been at our best tonight. Well, well dad is in the house, baby. John Paul Richardson <laughs> showing them today. And Tay Martin had the big explosive plays, a 37 and he a 38 did. yarder. Those were by far the longest tandem of plays he's had so far this year. Jalen Warren back in the game with Sanders. Nice pressure. A little curl to Tay Martin. And he'll get the first down. Shoved out by Rashad Williams. Sanders makes that completion to him with pressure in his face just to show you how settled he is and comfortable. Alternately, that has not been the case, and I think that's one of the reasons why Donovan Smith is not in the game. Most of the attempts he's made has been under duress. Jim Knowles' defense has been all over him tonight, and he has not responded. Quarterback switching in response to that. It's been that kind of night. Six catches, 114 yards for Martin. Warren. You know, he just sees lanes mm -hmm. and has great vision, cutting it back. Rashawn Merriweather with the tackle. Jalen Hutchison, the big nose tackle, just went right past him. So just a little stop and get back up vertical to make a guy miss can go a long way. A mortal back would have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. That's a four-yard gain. 341 yards of total offense to 41 in this game now. Desmond Jackson in for Warren. Out of the pistol. Jackson gets it. He'll be two yards shy of the first down. Josiah Pierre, number 16. Making the tackle. Sophomore transfer of Dora, Florida. Came from the Gators program. Let's see how they choose to deal with this little pace and tempo here, speeding it up. Third down two. Sanders. There's the pass he wanted. Marker down, but the catch made by Martin. Yeah, they're going after Williams again. I think they're going to find him holding off the ball. Yep. 16-yard pickup to Martin. And Williams probably Part guilty of the, of the hold. Holding. Defense number 12. That penalty will be declined. Result the play is the first down. Yep, and the interesting, that was what we call a run-pass conflict, third and short. Chose to throw it against press coverage with inside leverage. Again, still allowed the guy to keep, turn his hips and turn him inside out. That's a wonderful route. And that's more the kind of uh, reception we've come accustomed to seeing from Martin through the years. You know he wants to atone for that drop in the end zone. Jackson's in trouble. Mm -hmm. And another tackle for loss. Tyree Wilson with the play. Let me tell you what these ends, man. Getting after it on both sides of the ball. Complimenting each other. We've been talking a lot about Oklahoma State's ends, but this guy right here is playing with great leverage. And then Cole Birmingham, the left tackle, trying to push him out. He gives him a pole arm and stints him out there. It just works smooth for the tackle. That is the fifth tech tackle for loss tonight. Second and 16. Four wides now. Sanders underneath. That's Richardson out of the backfield. Hung in there to block for a while and then came out late as the last option of the check down. It'll be third down and five after the stop by Matthew Young, number 33. He's true here out of New Mexico State. True play for Sanders, just checking it down in the middle. We got four receivers into the route, but nothing there. Give him credit for defending them up. Six of 14 you on third You gotta get the personnel group in right. You gotta get off the field. He was he was very lucky that they were on the near hash, wasn't mm -hmm. he? <laughs> Play clock winding down. Sanders taking his time. Straight run. No doubt about it. And he's short. Got by about two yards, and that's Matthew Young again making the stop. It is four down territory. We'll see if uh, they decide to kick it or go for it on fourth down. Sills is hurt, and he was hurt coming into the night's game. Tyrese Will Williams got hurt, you might recall, earlier in the first half. And now Sills, who had to come into the game, pressed into duty, is now going to check out. And I thought Hunter Woodward did a wonderful job of right guard of what we call if blocking. And all that means is if you're covered, you can't pull. And if, you, if you're not covered, you can pull, which on that play, it was, as you designed it, you called it, rather, it was a design run. Well, this will be a 44 to 45 yarder. 
And if they make it, it's going to be 44. Make it a three possession game if they convert. Seven of nine on the year for Tanner coming into tonight's game. He's already hit a couple. Looking for another right here. Mm. Oh, that one was messed up from the jump. That's going to be against Oklahoma State. Three for three tonight, and this one will be backed up, I would suspect. So three for three tonight. Makes him nine out of 10 out of 12 on the year. Delay game, defense, calling disconcerting signals, which disrupted the offense's Kings five-yard penalty oh boy. yard results oh and a first God. down. Oh, uh, that won't go over real well. That will not go over real well. Disconcerting signals. I don't know that I've ever heard it uh, described heard like that. Never. Uh, I don't know that that's in the official handbook. Certainly not satisfying Sonny Cumbie or Keith Patterson. Yeah, Keith doesn't like it either. No. You know, they weren't particularly pleased with some of the calls here in Lubbock last week. It actually put their broadcast team on the shelf for tonight. <laughs> we wish those guys all the best. The Big 12 decided to give them a one-game suspension. Coming to the end of the quarter, so we'll try it. Looks like they're going to go with the offense and, and be in first down situation on their way. We start the fourth quarter, leading by 16. A chance really to put it away. And that's why Cumbie's so upset. Trucks built to serve. Well, the guy with the pump jack is a little bit jacked up <laughs> right now. And uh, he's getting an explanation. And during the break, Dean Blandino helped us out. Disconcerting, by the way, has been used before, and it's in the rule book that mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. I just have never heard it explained in such a manner. But uh, it had to be verbal because, as Dean told us, there was no clapping. So whatever happened would have been a verbal cadence maneuver that was deemed illegal. Richardson's in the backfield. Sanders will roll the other way on first down. Into the corner, and that would be incomplete. Bray was the intended receiver, and a flag is down. Well, Sanders was under duress and pressure. Again, tough to get his shoulders back square to deliver that ball where it needed to go, and I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if Holding. there was a late hit on him. Defense, oh, holding, number 33, 10-yard huh? penalty for the previous spot. The yardage results in a first down. This is a byproduct of the defense really being fatigued. I mean, you could tell. Eric Monroe and a bunch of other guys with their hands on hips, holding their jerseys a bit bent over. Young, there you see it. That's a clear hold on Blaine Young. Yeah, and you, you see a running back flash across your face, and you know that's part of your responsibility. I think it's important, though, that you discern what the play is. And again, that's where film study comes in. If a guy crosses your face and the quarterback is rolling to his left, needs to set up to throw it properly. You can bet quarterback coach Tim Rattay for Spencer Sanders wants to see this offense cash in with six here. Not have to settle for three. Richardson runs right into Rico Jeffers after a gain of three. It took Rico for a ride there, man. An extra three or four yards, man. And Jeffers had to hang on for dear life. Second down and seven. If they get the first down just outside the team. Sanders nice. will take it in. Touchdown, Cowboys. That's his fifth rushing of the year. Now you can see that one coming. This defense for Texas Tech really tired. And after that penalty on the field goal try, they really wilted. Hasn't come easily for Oklahoma State tonight. This has been a stingy Texas Tech defense. And they're outmanned in terms of depth. But they have been tough throughout the course of the game inside the red zone. But a little bit like Baylor today over at Kansas State, you know, it doesn't have to be a work of art. Mm -hmm. Just win, baby. 
stay in the hunt for the Big 12, and then possibly the Invitational. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong, protect what matters most. Uh, the Buddy Holly Museum. That young lady doing the air guitar. <laughs> Gotta love it. 23 to nothing. That'll be the day she's singing to herself. Well, Buddy Holly was known for having the lead yep. rhythm, bass, drums, all Absolutely. that stuff line up together, right? Yep. I wish that Texas Tech probably wish they could have some offense line up tonight. They've been struggling. Well, a Cowboy defense has a lot to do with that. Dogger is awaiting the kick. Now, an emphatic uh, run here in the fourth quarter, maybe some style points, could be in order for Oklahoma State, given some of the proceedings of the day. Tomorrow, we've got a huge double hitter on Fox. First, the Packers take on the Vikings. Other regional action, then America's Game of the Week. Dak and the Cowboys battle Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. It's all on Fox and on the Fox Sports app. Check local listings for the games in your area. Looks like the Chiefs has uh, kind of healed what it ailed them. Yeah, they needed that win last week. It wasn't necessarily pretty, but mm -hmm. they got it. Mm -hmm. I think Dallas can do pretty much what they want to do. I, mean, they, I think they're better than most people give them credit for. They're a good team. So Robert Thompson stopped in his tracks. No gain on first down. Tyler Lacey making the tackle. And a little chippy, it seemed, <laughs> in the aftermath. Here comes a flag. Oh, Lord. Yep. Another bottle. That would be 15. It sure was. Yep, it sure was. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Texas Tech fans for throwing objects onto the field. Half the distance, the down counts, second down. Mm -hmm. Now you just can't do that. I mean, you just, you can't do it. No matter how upset you get. Your guys are still doing the best they can. It's their last game at home. For a lot of seniors and super seniors, just three words, let them play. Second down in an eternity now. Mm. Morton in a lot of trouble. Gets oh, out of there, though, look at that. with a lot of green grass in front of him. And he scampers down the sidelines, a flag thrown behind the play. He got out to the 30-yard line. But let's see what happened behind the play. The Flag came down about five yards behind where he stepped out of bounds. I thought Tyler Lacey had him dead to rights, man. Yeah, me too. Good Lord. He comes spinning out of there like a little Tasmanian devil. It had been relatively flag-free in mm -hmm. the first half, but it's gotten a little chippy as games that are physical tend to do. There, there's no foul for blindside block. We have a lot of those in college football in this day and time. We really do. But I'm glad they got it right, and I'm glad they had the conversation. They mark it at the 30. 17-yard pickup here on this ad lib from Baron Morton. So you got a third and manageable here, third down and five. Trips to the top of your screen. Well, the mean amount of yards this defense gives up, this is this is a lot of yardage. It is. <laughs> Pressure off the edge again. Yep. It affected yep. that throw, and mm -hmm. it might have been picked. Almost picked off. And that was Devin Harper that had the shot at it. He was actually already on the ground when the ball got to him, a wounded duck as the pressure had gotten to Morton off his backside. Well, that's been the reoccurring theme all night. Pressure coming, Martin, from the outside. It, it came from everywhere, Tim. This stop unit for the Pokes has really been active. Ever in the middle, whether it came from the perimeter or the edges, they have been consistent with their pressure packages. Jim Knowles dialing up pressure. He told us in our time together this week that he was going to find a way to affect the quarterback. The one that's yeah, he's causing done. all the problems is not in the game now, but he had to change his plans. Yeah, he's done that, that's for sure. And, yeah, we've had these guys three of the last four weeks. We joked about being sized for a letter jacket at the top of the show. <laughs> but, Spencer. That's all right. It's been a joy to watch it these has guys, been. man. It has been. This is the ninth punt of the game for McNamara. And a fair catch called. 
when we come back, I want to discuss again the big picture. I don't think we're clouded because we've seen a lot of them. Mm. I just think they're the best team in this league and one of the best in the country. Our moment of the game, sponsored by the new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Could it be the best Coke ever? That was some moment by Bucky Sun, huh? <laughs> John Paul Richardson. Hey, that is Think of those two first name, three first name guys. Oh, yeah. That's, Paul Ott Carruth. That's an Aggie kind of thing. Think about it, yeah. <laughs> Remember Paul Ott Carruth who played at Alabama years ago? That's mm -hmm. Tay Martin on the receiving end. So good, you had to name him twice. <laughs> Adrian Taylor Demerson coming over there to make the stop. Cowboys, I think, Spencer, would be well served. We can talk about this a little bit more as the game progresses here in the fourth quarter. If you want to move up, you better impress a little more. Yep. As Coach Pete said at halftime, you know, I just think they're not quite sexy enough. They're not the... I, ne I never thought I'd hear Coach Peterson say that, but he did. And he may not be wrong. That's a back shoulder throw for Bray. But it's incomplete. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right. You know, you can't depend on the folks who are supposed to make qualified decisions about who advances no. or not to. No, you can't. To adjudicate your case for you, that's for sure. But one way to do it is with numbers. I mean, anybody that's a purist, or even if you're not a purist, you look at this goose egg sitting up here, first thing that draws my attention is, if you still think defense wins championship, look at Oklahoma State, what they're doing. This is impressive. Third down, a yard to go. Dominic Richardson is the setback. They have not targeted Presley at all tonight. Richardson ahead has the first down. And they may do it just with power football on the rest of the way. Here's the thing that just kind of jumps out to me, and it was part of the conversation Emmanuel Acho and Coach Pete had when talking about, I think it was Mike that said, Mike Hill, that said to them, well, what if Oklahoma State were to beat Oklahoma, go on, win the Big 12 title, only have one loss, would you keep them out over an undefeated Cincinnati? And Emmanuel said, you know, I don't think any team in the Big 12 has distinguished themselves enough to overtake Cincinnati as an undefeated team. I'm pretty sure I got that right. I disagree with that. Yeah, well, I'd love to hear you make that case. As Richardson moves ahead, gets it to the 30-31 yard line, so a gain of two, Reggie Pearson with the tackle. Well, I look at what Oklahoma State has done, Timmy, and, and I think per man, as we talked about at the top of the show, you may not have players that are on the short list of some of these postseason honors, but I will dare you to find a better defense with the cohesion, the depth, the age, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. continuity that you see on this Oklahoma State Cowboy team right now. There's nobody that matches that saving Georgia. Well, they have had 38 passes and 38 rush attempts in this game, so total balance on the part of their offense. Second down and eight here for Sanders. And they're just going to hand it off and let the clock go tick, tick, tick. And he's ahead to the 33-yard line. Well, here's Cincinnati made a statement today. They blew out an SMU team that a lot of pundits thought would end their unbeaten reign. I mean, it was an absolute blowout. And Luke Fickle's team thrives on defense. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame made an equally large statement with a blowout. They knew they had to do it in yeah. Notre Dame. And now with Oregon gone, Utah took care of them tonight. Uh, Wake Forest again, by the way, lost to Clemson. And in addition to that, Michigan State, as predicted, was blown out by Ohio State. So there's room for Oklahoma State to move up. How far may depend on just how good they look. Here in the remaining, oh, 10.40 or so. I'm afraid, and I've said this before, Spencer, I'm afraid that this thought process of through the history of the Big 12, as Emmanuel mentioned, it's an excellent point, that no team has distinguished itself enough to overtake an undefeated Cincinnati. I think that's bringing in stereotypes well, of a league and not taking into consideration what's happened this year with this team in this conference. You took the words right out of my mouth. There's brand bias yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And, and again, we all are guilty of it to some degree, but if you've watched enough football and you're doing exactly what the committee is supposed to do, not project where they think you're going to be. Well, what I don't want to hear is what I heard last week. Well, if you put the game aside, this team is better than the other. No, no, no. I think the game really should matter, regardless of what happened to Michigan State today.
Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy with our Heisman Trophy watch. Well, I tell you, Kenny Pickett is some talent. Yeah. Quarterback at Pitt. He was impressive. But you know what? This was a three-horse race coming into this weekend, and two of those horses were facing one another, and that was Kenneth Walker, of course. But this guy right here, yeah. when you look at his numbers, he ended today with a quarterback rating of 251, 91% completion percentage. Yep, that's strong. Incredible. So, you know, I, if, you, if you go with the history, the numbers, you've got three of the top elite receivers in the league. You've got a 1,000-yard rusher likely. I mean, I don't think that's well, maybe happened once in the history of storied history of uh, Ohio State. They have a thousand yard rusher and a th three thousand yard receivers. I agree with you. But I also think Kenny Pickett is a stud. <laughs> Bryce Young with 560 yards passing and five touchdowns, too. And he'll get another chance. That pass for Geiger incomplete. The marker now come. It comes late. And it's Jared Bernard Converse who they've been picking on. Uh, that may be the guilty party. Well, when you turn around or don't turn around and look at the ball, you're going to get called yeah. every single time. So you got to make Defense, an honest effort. Number 24, 15 yard penalty in an automatic first down. Well, let me also add, Spencer, about these receivers. We talk about these quarterbacks have great receivers. Ohio State's got what? Three. Three unbelievable receivers. Well, Pickett's got one that maybe you haven't heard of Jordan Addison. He was huge today in their coastal win putting them in the ACC championship young man that might win or at least be a finalist for the uh, Bolitnikoff award Donovan Smith back in the game and he lets it fly for Mason Tharp incomplete Tanner McAllister was in coverage Addison in that game had four touchdowns over 200 yards for Pat Narduzzi's pit team McAllister did a wonderful job of defending on the back end. He couldn't complete the play. He has it in his gun sights the whole time. High points it, just can't control it to the end. He's lamenting the fact that he couldn't. That's a big target. He stole it away from him, too. He just couldn't complete the catch. Well, Donovan Smith on the learning curve for Sonny Cumbie, and he's back out there now after mm -hmm. being lifted for a period of time in favor of Baron Morton. Not much changed as the Oklahoma State defense has continued to apply the pressure and... Uh, you know, I don't know how much more they need to do offensively, Spencer, but I do know this, as this pass is caught by McLean Mannix. And he's got a first down to the 45. This is an offense, Spencer, that averaged 440 yards of total offense, and they're held under 100. Right now, they're at 76 total yards in tonight's game. Smith. There's a couple of flags here now on the back end. Yeah, and I believe the ball, his arm was hit. So he came out like a wounded duck and another marker down there in pass coverage. So we could have holding or a couple of fouls here. Defense, more than 11 players on the field, five-yard penalty. So first down. <laughs> Coach is like, and I, whatever it is, he, he's about execution, man, and cleanly. He manages his coaches and coaches them up just like he does his players. One of the best in the business. Now, he knows what, what it's all about for his season. He talked to us about it a couple of weeks ago. And mm -hmm. normally coaches never get ahead of themselves. But he says, hey, these guys are veterans. They know what the story is. Until we take down OU in Bedlam, this uh, stereotype will exist. So it all will come down the next week. Azukama with the reception. And I believe that may be enough for the first down. And it is at the 36-yard line. Well, for the fans that have remained, they got a little something to get excited about. Timmy, that guy right there, as you pointed out, I mean, as, as long as he's been producing big wins, I think six out of the last ten, he's produced ten win seasons. This still would be the first, if they can navigate to this point, the first Big 12 championship they would win yes. if they make it there. Rigdon was the intended receiver. We were on hand when the Bedlam matchup was for a de facto title back in 2015. Uh, Baker Mayfield mm -hmm. got that win. It was an early game with, before they had a Big 12 championship. Well, that's DeAndre Smith, the running backs coach and father of Donovan. Very active over there on that sideline constantly talking with his son and QB. Farp 
Makes the catch and shoved out by Malcolm Rodriguez. You know, I'm sure this happens a lot, Timmy, all over the country, but I don't think anywhere where it happens quite like it does in Texas because it's so deep and talented in high school. Where I remember back at Oklahoma, you, know, you had guys that came from Booker T. Washington, Raymond Tisdale, his brother, and Coach Mike Mims. They were packages, man. They came yeah. together. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll go if you go. Yes, yeah, sir. You know, that kind of deal. And I think that's what Joey McGuire and, and Sonny Company together want. They, oh, they want more of those package deals Heck here yeah. in West Texas. Heck yeah. Third down and seven for Donovan Smith. Looking deep in the end zone, incomplete. And solid coverage on Fungi there by Holmes, the redshirt senior. Yeah, the Missouri is, transfer right there with him. And he did a wonderful job with press coverage and pushing him. Did Holmes to the sideline. And he even tries to get his head around. And you know, he's going to put that little sword in his little sheath. <laughs> let everybody know that he's covering. So fourth and seven. And they look to keep the drive alive. Cowboys want the shutout. You know that. that was looping it long and it is incomplete. And a mark roll. I thought he was going for the flag. He wasn't. He, he moved for it, and then he said no. Side judge went for it, and then <laughs> said, uh, uh I'm not going to throw it. That's Jabbar Muhammad in coverage against Dalton Rigdon. It's one of those rare cases Smith left it a little bit short. They got him under 100 yards, only 85 yards given up. Cowboys defense is just really tough. Fox College Football is sponsored by Under Armour. The only way is through. 725 remaining here in the fourth. And the shutout continues. Desmond Jackson is in the backfield and will see if they go for more points or how aggressive they will be here the rest of the way. Jackson against what is really a tired. Texas Tech defense. Eric Monroe with the tackle after a seven yard pickup. It's been death by a thousand cuts. I mean, you know, early on it was field goals, navigating and keeping this defense, as you pointed out, on the field for Texas Tech. They're worn out, but Timmy, the offense really hadn't helped them much at all tonight. Yeah. And again, I go back to that 440 yards. Of offense, the average for this Texas Tech team, Spencer, they were 33rd in the country in scoring. Okay, 33. Mm -hmm. And 30th in total yards. And they've been held to 85 yards tonight by the Cowboys D. Streaking down the sidelines. That's Jaden Bray, and he's out of bounds. You know, I don't know how you create a, a paradigm shift where people can appreciate what you just said. What, how significant it is for Jim Knowles' defense to do what they've done. Threefold reduced the amount of yardage of a team that came in here with every incentive to do well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're debuting a white-hot new quarterback that has got all the metrics in terms of size and all that stuff, and you just basically shut the door on them. And I think it's enabled in some ways, Spencer, for, for Gundy, it's enabled him to play it close to the vest the entire game mm -hmm. and not really show their next opponent anything. Yep. Jackson, he stopped shy of the first down. It'll be fourth down. And, and I asked you the question earlier, and I don't think there's, in just watching the game play out, you can tell he's really staying close to the vest. Yep. Not giving Oklahoma a chance to see anything. Well, I don't know what the status is, but I know DJ Graham went out for Oklahoma. There's, there, the throw game for Oklahoma State is probably going to be more in vogue than it had been because I think what Oklahoma showed defensively today was impressive. Mm -hmm. Definitely an improvement of what it was the week prior. But I think there's going to be some vertical attack involved in going after Oklahoma. I think there has to be. And I just don't know how healthy necessarily Oklahoma will be, but... I think that much of D.J. Graham. Hutton will punt it away with McLean Mannix back deep. And he takes it at the 16-yard line. Our game summary from Pacific Life, sponsored by Pacific Life, more than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. And what mattered most to the Cowboys? Pressure, pressure, pressure. And they got it from every level. It was the back end, the, the complimentary rush ins on either side was doing it. 
And, and Tim, they, they were consistent with that pressure. I mean, under duress all time, the signal callers were for Texas Tech. Remember this about Texas Tech. Team that uh, is playing their final game at home. Still has a chance to get to the seven win mark before going bowling. They sewed that up last week. Their upset win over Iowa State. Colby Harvell Peel with that tackle. The future, this kid is it, the future for Texas Tech, isn't he? No question about it. Definitely is the future. And, you know, all of the, the measurables are there. You've got a coach as long as Sonny Cumbie is here. And again, you know, the new. Incumbent coach told us that he's gonna he has an evaluative process. He's going through. Yep It'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but I'll Tell you what I, I guarantee you Sonny Cumming would be snatched up as quick as a hiccup Yeah, no doubt about that <laughs> and uh, it's not lost I'm sure on the administration mm -hmm. that he has a year remaining yep. on a multi-year contract mm -hmm. You know Kirby Hocutt is well aware of that as is his new head coach and they are friends They've been friends for quite some time and Sonny told us he's made no bones about it. I've already let them know that I want to stay here and I as long as I have autonomy to run the offense I really want to be here but you know the funny thing is Spencer last time we were here we had no idea that coach Wells would be gone as quickly as he was and as good as Cumbie is and with all the openings out there who's to say he might My not gosh. get an offer absolutely you know who's to say and I mean as a head coach and the heads haven't stopped falling yet there's going to be more to come so yeah. there'll be plenty of opportunities there's Tharp with the catch out to the 43 yard line. Yeah, this freshman <laughs> makes a big catch and it'll be valued offensively. It'll get him over 100 for the game. Well, the, the thing that comes to mind when I see that Devin Harper was right in his face. That's been the consistent theme under pressure. Great play that had happened and so forth. But once again, I just cannot get over the fact that this consistent Cowboy defense here with 442 left in the game showing the same level of activity that they did when it started. So Spencer, in 15 of the last 16 quarters, this defense has not allowed a touchdown. Okay? Think about that. <laughs> Kansas TCU, Texas Tech, they have not allowed a touchdown. 15 of 16 quarters. That is unbelievable. It's incredible, man. How much do we value defense in this era of spread? Going deep for Geiger. Incomplete. And again, Converse, Bernard Converse right there with him, getting the job done in single coverage. And you can go with four, a four-man front, let these guys play single coverage. Got away with a grab there. Yeah, that was a nice little grab there. Around the, um, the collar area. Timmy, I remember when we were trying to redefine what constitutes good defense a couple years ago. <laughs> Three, giving up 300 yards through the air was yeah. good defense. Amazing. And you really now would have to say to have a big day, you got to throw for over 450, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not 300. Smith is sacked again. Tremendous penetration by Evers, who's been all over the place. The redshirt senior from Bixby, Oklahoma. Look at that. No pass touchdown allowed in four hours, 21 minutes, 41 seconds. <laughs> oh, my. We got it down to hours of play. 16 negative plays tonight for that defense against Texas Tech. Harper was in coverage that time of Mannix. Thomas Harper did a wonderful job. He's disappointed. He didn't snatch that one and take it home with him. Great defensive effort. I'm just really impressed with the consistency of the effort given by this Pokes defense, man. They've been consistent. Bernard Converse, Muhammad, Holmes. Okay. So we just need to let Gundy know I'm a, admittedly, I, I want room in my jacket. <laughs> So I need a double XL. You could probably get away with a, just a large, right? Probably a large. But then you couldn't go back to normal. That's just true. That's so I'll true. just take both. <laughs> I'm the king of swag. No, listen, but you know I'm an analyst. I say what I see. I know man. you do. It doesn't matter. I'm going to call them like I see them. And I can tell you, I absolutely love this Oklahoma State yep. defense. Right. Well, here's... Here's Spencer Tillman's top seven. He calls him as he sees him. 
That's right. right. Like Georgia first, Bama two. And people may take exception that I've got Michigan right. You got ahead a of Cincinnati. Yeah, but that's where I've yeah. got them, and I moved them up there. And and, and I know you, you're flying the ointment in Cincinnati. Yeah, you I got them ahead I, yeah, of them. I, I would have Cincinnati four, and I'm saying that I would have them four, thinking like, <laughs> you know, the committee thinks, right? Not not the way I think. So you want you think there's going to prop them up to, to for there be a takeover on yes. that final they'll say that yeah, final weekend they, they'll do for them what they did for TCU in 14 get them up to four or three and then drop them <laughs> drop them the moment the uh, championship week rolls around and somebody's impressive whether it's a a Big 12 team uh, or the second to, listen if Alabama plays Georgia well loses on a field goal Timmy I think they're I'm in, telling you Alabama. I will think, be in the playoff. I a two-loss Alabama will be in over an unbeaten I, Cincinnati. I think they're incapable of hiding their bias at this point, Tim. I, you, the brand name of Michigan is what it is. And we live in a world of images and impression. I don't think they're going to put them in a position where they can't climb back out of it. I think they're going to be there. So that's the reason why I went ahead and put them right there. And so, you think spot. So, oh, so you think Cincinnati will get there eventually if Michigan loses to if, Ohio If State. Michigan loses. Yeah. See, I, I, I believe that there's no doubt that a, a competitive Alabama losing to Georgia if the game is close. And look, Georgia's defense is great, but they haven't played any offenses that are great shakes. They really haven't. Alabama can have a big day offensively against them. I hear where you're coming. That, be close. That outcome and then obviously what happens with uh, Cincinnati and Notre Dame. Yeah. Notre Dame obviously trying to put up style points well, to mitigate that. Yeah, see, that's the thing. The committee, What the committee does with Notre Dame really tells you how they have to deal Absolutely. with Cincinnati. I said that last week. It's a dilemma. <laughs> a huge dilemma. <laughs> and we love those. Well, it's, it's more <laughs> than a dilemma. I think it's uh, situational ethics. No, that's clear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. To be more specific. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Don't believe your lying eyes. Mm. Screech, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, unless and until we expand this thing, it's going to be this way. When a system is fundamentally flawed as this one is, and uh, it was was not put together with anything in mind other than taking care of the po Power Five conferences. And uh, you know, the, in defense of the committee and in defense of the situation, uh, the conferences that are outside the Power Five, including. Our friend Mike Oresco's American Conference signed off on a deal that mm -hmm. enabled this system to be in play. Mm. Well, he's just going to take a knee in victory formation and uh, call it a day. It's all about next week, Spencer. How do you see your, your thinking about the matchup now with the Sooners? Bedlam, how do you see this one playing out? I think it'd be, it was going to be like a 24-17 type game, believe it or not. I, I think the defense is that good, and if Oklahoma puts together another defense performance like they did today, they're going to be up at another level, and I think that they have to do that to stay in this game. But here's where I think Oklahoma State will win the game. Because you will have to honor their run game, you're going to be thrust into a single safety look. Those whole shots are going to be there. Unlike tonight, they're going to take those shots against Oklahoma. I truly believe that. This will be Oklahoma State's first shutout since September 1st, 2012. 84 to nothing over Savannah State. And uh, let me say this to you, Spencer. <laughs> uh, by the way, Shannon Sharp was not playing in that game. We should point that out <laughs> for Savannah State. We'll have some time to talk about the matchup a little bit more, partner, when we come back. But Mike Gundy's team now has matched Oklahoma. They are 10 and 1. Baylor is not out of this, by the way. Okay. And what we do know is that Oklahoma State is in the Big 12 title game, mm -hmm. no matter what no. happens next week. So, regardless of what happens in Bedlam, the Cowboys have punched their ticket to the Big 12 Conference Championship game by virtue of this win. We'll be back to wrap it up. A preview more of what's ahead next week after this.